best friends, butt buddies, broadcasters. Call them whatever you want. Jim Norton and Sam Roberts are live. Do you think that best the butt buddies part is appropriate? No, we could probably refresh some of those. <laughs> I mean, yeah. butt buddies doesn't accurately doesn't describe our relationship. No, coworkers, creative collaborators, butt buddies isn't isn't uh, that's right. Isn't isn't one of the depends what kind of butt you're you're assuming it is. So it's like uh, no best friends, B-U-T-T. butt buddies. Oh. oh, I never thought of it that way. Like there's a comma. Yeah. yeah, grammar is so important. Sure is. It adds context for everything. So, it's, but you instantly, you actually before you Travis even finished, corrected him to say no B U T T. Well, it has to be because buddies. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be best friends but buddies. No one says best friends but buddies. Right. They're not you'd conflicting say, ideas. You'd say enemies, but yeah. buddies, coworkers, or, but buddies. Right. Or whatever. You no. wouldn't say best friends but buddies. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't. But in our case, it does. No, it doesn't. It's still, you're not listening to me. Why? I don't think. I'm trying to tell you that in well, no I, context does butt buddies work. After, I mean, best friends doesn't even work. We're not butt buddies. We're not. It's stupid. That's a great insult, though. Someone's doing something you don't like. What's it, your butt buddy? Yeah. I don't know. He's hanging out with his butt buddy again. Like, but do even guys that fuck each other in the ass call each other butt buddies? No, it's ne- it's only been used uh, diminutive. <clears throat> it's only been used to demean. Like, that's only used when you're in school and your best friend Starts hanging out with somebody else instead of you. And they're like, oh, where's so-and-so? And you're like, oh, he's fucking, he's hanging out with his butt, buddy. It is, a, it is a weird thing. Anybody who agrees, like, who you agree with, who doesn't agree with the person insulting you. <laughs> right. Those two are butt buddies. Yeah, they spend too much time together. Oh, yeah, I'm going to argue with these butt buddies, sure. Because why would you, like, if you were actually, like, sexual partners, you wouldn't say, oh, it's my butt buddy. Like, I wouldn't, I don't say to, hey, Jess, that's my pussy pal. You know, I use her pussy because I can. You said that many times when the mics were off. <laughs> is that, is that yeah. how I describe her? Yeah. When the mics are off, I've heard that a lot. Jim, don't, don't, don't offend my pussy pal. Jess. Yeah. <laughs> and I've described my young ladies as butt buddies. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What a, what a, what a, uh, and I want to get into the, there's uh, some, you know, conflict on this channel happening. Drama. Which we definitely want to discuss, but after last night, I got home last night like everybody else and saw this horrible fucking news. Yeah. It's one of the, it's one of the worst in recent memory because. Of the kids that are involved, so they're just animals. These people, they're just they're targeting people. They they know it's like a bunch of a fucking Ariana Grande. Like it's all kids are fans. They're like a bunch of pop stars. Fans of who? I, I know. I said Grande. Here's a Grande. I don't know how to say it. Now. <laughs> well, you said Grand. So <laughs> how is it? I don't know. <laughs> Ariana, Ariana Grande. Okay. Oh, you got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, Ariana Grande. Yeah, I, I'm kind of almost happy. I don't know her name. It's 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 Grande. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why are you telling the wrong name? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but, but her her fans, <laughs> the, the the A A to the G. Yeah. Her her fans. They're all young. Like you know, it's not like you're going to a fucking. It's a metal concert where you know there's mostly 35 to 50 year old white guys who, if you're you know a radical. Islamic, uh, you're, you're a terrorist. You probably don't like 35 to 50 year old white guys because they're they're the military or they're the guys who vote the way you don't like. Or they're the ones, that, or they can actively be practicing the things that you're against. That you're against. But a bunch of teenage girls. Yeah. Like really? I mean, I'm not saying. And it's, there's going to be one person that will call in. And go, what do you mean? It should have been a con- another. Con-. No. So I'm saying. And not even teenage girl. I mean, there's tweens and like kids as young as six. Yeah. But like really? And, and then ISIS takes credit for it. It's like I mean, look, they're not in the PR business, but like, is that really what you want credit for? Like you fucking a, a bunch of teenage and preteen girls. It's as cowardly as Ugh. one of these attacks can be. Like you always hear, like, "Oh, this is a cowardly attack." That's a cowardly attack. But to go and attack a pop concert, and and, and especially Ariana Grande, who's like as pop as pop can be, it's just the worst. Because there's no fear of like, "Oh, well, what if this doesn't work and they attack me?" Oh, well, don't worry, it's a bunch of teenage girls I'm attacking. Yeah, for no reason. Do they know. I mean, the, the guy, the one guy. We all. It's, it's funny how. You know, everyone says, well, we can't, uh, no one said it this time. No one said don't jump to conclusions this time, though. People have been saying it. Oh, where? I haven't, I haven't heard one person say that. People I'm not are, saying they have it. I just haven't heard people it. People are definitely <laughs> saying do not use the I or M words, Islamic or Muslim. Do not use either of those two words. Who yet. said that? That's been said all, since it, absolutely any sort of liberal uh, uh, or even young or anything. Talk about it. it was on the news last night. It was all... They barely even wanted to say extremists. They were just like these these attackers, these monsters. Well, these, on but, some channels and on other I mean, channels, they were probably probably saying, "Well, yeah, it, it's probably a Muslim terrorist." And again, we don't know yet, but in the it probably is. In the beginning, they wouldn't even say terrorist. In the beginning, they, they were like, "Well, we don't know if, the, if it could have been a, an explosion in the building. It could have been, you know, a heater gone awry. It could have been a mechanical error. It could have been any of these things." And then it was like, "Okay, well, it looks as though it was some kind of attack." And you know, I mean, it took a long time to 
say terrorism, and now there's still a Suicide lot of bombing, places. Yeah. A lot of a, a lot of places will not will stop you if you say Islamic or Muslim terrorist or well, terrorist. They, I mean, unless unless they're doing it just to be responsible and say, well, once we have a confirmation, because like people also raise this, what about the guy in Times Square? Why wasn't he considered a terrorist? A lot of times it's what people say they're doing something for, whether or not they're considered a terrorist. You mean the guy who drove through the crowd of people? Yeah, and a lot of times if you're if you jump if you're just a nut. Yeah, I mean it is an act of terrorism, but sure. it's just you know I, I don't know why we look at it differently. It's not because it's because he wasn't a white guy. It's I think it's if you say you're doing it for a political right. or religious cause. It's not like an act of organized terror. It's considered that. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's the difference. That Of course, you can make the argument that any crime like this is a terrorist crime, but terrorism generally is, is trying to scare somebody into changing their way of life. And this guy in Times Square just lost his mind. Like, he's not... At this point, right today, he's not sitting there looking, well, I want people who are walking through Times Square to live in fear. Like, he's like, oh, my God, what did I do? He's just a maniac. He's, yeah. 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 And that's there's there's a big difference. And Hank is saying, and this is the, the, an opinion a lot of people have. I understand why they took credit, Hank. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't, the point was, go ahead. Yeah. No, Jim, that's not what I'm saying. I'm okay. not saying about taking credit. I'm saying. Um, you ain't said you know, anything. You were, you were talking about the uh, demographic that they chose, not, you know, uh, metalheads who are white males 30 to 50. Why do they choose these poor children? Well, that's exactly why, because it's so terrible and so terrifying to murder these young girls. And, and, and uh, Sam, I think, uh, uh, understands now that, uh, that um, that will lead to, uh, society to change their, you know, to always be looking over their shoulder and, and uh, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. then go on to change their policies. But, but that's there is, exactly there is, why they That's what that they group. say, but there's no policy change that is going to, fi to fix this. There's no policy change. Um, and, and I think this also makes people a lot angrier than it does other types of attacks. When, when something like this happens, it really... Although, you know what? There was a fucking... The shootings in this country in Newtown or whatever, and nothing gets done anyway. So all the anger doesn't mean anything. Thanks, Hank. It's just, I think, to, to try to hit as mainstream a topic as possible. You know, I think that's why they go for a concert like this. But in terms of, of terrorizing and, and, and skewing the way victims look at the world, like, it's not like when they hit the Eagles of Death Metal, that was a small story. Like, that was an True. enormous story, and the story is that people who are just trying to go out and enjoy their lives are, are getting attacked. And the same thing happened here. It's just, I think, much more, uh, uh, it's cowardly and it's sickening. MSNBC is actually talking about the Russia probe. Well, now, obviously that's important, but it's it's eight o'clock in the morning. It's kind of like the morning news, yeah. and they're harping on the fucking Russia probe. We it, were talking about this earlier. I know, but it's just oh, who cares about the Russia probe? But then again, you don't want twenty four hours of the same thing too. Yeah. Kinda, but I mean, you know, for a couple hours, you got to you know at least until we know what the fuck happened. So they're saying it was a suicide bomber who had like a one of those dirty bombs that like fires out nail nails bomb, yeah. and and all that stuff. And they're saying it was just one guy. Now, the news I was watching last night, I guess I didn't even realize it, but it makes sense was that uh in England, they don't even really have garbage cans in concert venues, like in arenas and stuff like that because the IRA was such a big thing <laughs> right. that and, and the IRA they attacked a few times, but it was so much of it was bomb threats. And they would never ever have set off something where they knew a bunch of children no. were going. No, because they had a specific political cause. People keep mentioning them, though. I guarantee you some dummy, some dope today will go, what about the IRA? Yeah, exactly. Like, they would have done this at an Ariana Grande concert. Shut up. It's, I don't know who that is, but it's, it's amazing. Oh, Grande. <laughs> it's amazing that, like, the two words have to be used together because, like, you've got opposite sides to the extreme. Whenever any of this, anything like this happens, you got people who either won't say... Muslim, Islamic, they will not mention that religion at all, period. No, we don't know, we don't know. And then on the other side, and I think it's in response to how little is talked about, you have people that just blame the entire religion. That They're just like, well, this is, this is the fault of Muslim. Like, no, the answer is, like, Muslim extremists. Like, why is it so hard for people to just say Muslim terrorists, Muslim extremists? Because you're, you're declared Islamophobic if you say um, Muslim too much. So and, they, and, and they just, away. Right. And they just won't do it. But it's pretty clear. They won't do it, no. And, and you know, and you could be wrong. And you're like, oh, we thought it was this. But it's not even, it's not Islamophobic. I want to be wrong about this. Don't of you course. want, like, I yes. literally, the first, the first thing everyone thinks of, even you phonies that are out there going, don't jump to conclusion. Everyone is thinking this is uh, Islamic terrorism. And, and I literally do want to be wrong. And the, the people say, well, how does that make a difference? The kids are still dead. That's true. But it's just, I don't know why. I just, I, I wanted to just be some lunatic and not, and again, that doesn't mean anything to the families. But you want it, yeah, of course you want it to be. But 
but that is the first thing that people jump to, and they pretend it isn't because yeah, they deny it. Because you look at it's not Islamophobic. You look at history, recent history, the past several years, and you're like, who's responsible for attacks similar to this? And you go, this looks like the M.O. of Muslim extremists. Oh, don't forget, someone please make sure you mention Timothy McVeigh from 1993. Please mention him. I literally heard a radio show this morning go on the air, and they were like talking about this, and they're like, you know, terrorism is terrorism. And you know, there was a there was a, an alt-right neo-Nazi in Maryland that stabbed a guy. So that's terrorism, too. So terrorism is terrorism, and we don't know who did this. What guilt-ridden radio show said that? I'm not going to say what radio okay. show it was, but... But the, the, but the guilty need to yeah. say... Can you imagine... Like, if it was a rape, can you imagine having to justify the way you spoke about the attacker? Can you imagine having to say, well, I mean, look, I mean, this guy, he did rape this woman, but I mean, uh, a lot of other guys rape women. A lot of other guys... You know, it's like, just, you point to the culprit, it's okay to point to the culprit. Yes, and people should still be allowed to practice... Islam and people should still be allowed to be Muslim, but Everybody just has to acknowledge what's going on on the extreme side of it And the longer that you just don't acknowledge it and just act like oh well It's just terrorism, and I don't know it doesn't fall under any category. It's just just all just terrorism You know nothing nothing else just terrorism. It's like That's never gonna happen. Yeah, it's one group that's doing it a little more than everyone else at this right. point We all know it and stop to, pretending and, Jesus and to not acknowledge it is I believe promotes Islamophobia. It's also childlike to yeah. not acknowledge it. It's, it's it's literally childish. It's it's extremely childish, and and then it makes people who uh, are aware of what's going on feel like, why are we being so sensitive to this group that is responsible? Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. And like, they're why saying are... they're responsible. We're not we're not joining. The, they're saying this is why we did it. Oh, okay. Right, right. <laughs> How do you know why? Oh, they told us. They just said it. They, they said it. Yeah. They yeah, got not, said it. Aren't you jumping to conclusions? No, 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 no. Just, yeah, it's, just, a very, it's a slow mosey into a conclusion. <laughs> yeah, we're, with my ears open and I heard what he said. But this one has not been, has not at all been, uh, look, we don't, uh, they say ISIS is taking credit, but mm -hmm. I think sometimes they just take credit. Uh, someone is saying it's inconsistent with ISIS. How is that, sir? Yes, Rick. Uh, good morning, boys. Hello. Good morning. Um, I, I don't think ISIS, you know, for, for all of us, uh, Muslim extremism and its horrific acts, you know, they're organized. They're like Al-Qaeda. I mean, they have professional terrorists. I don't think they would attack a, a children on purpose. Of course they would. Of course well, they would. Well, they're fucking animals. Of course they would. Here's the thing about, here's the thing about ISIS. Back, is back that back their attack. They haven't done that. Yeah, but look, ISIS has, uh, has expanded way beyond just like right. this actual group of people that sends out troops. Okay, you're going over here to do this act. You're going over there to do this act. ISIS is this thing that now is like a mindset where people can look up ISIS shit on the internet. And just decide, like, yeah, I agree with that, I agree with that. Like, this person may very well be a guy who's an individual who decided to just go out and do this. But I ISIS is taking, I, yeah, but ISIS is taking credit for it because he went out and did it based on the ideals that they're pushing out there. Didn't they take credit for the guy um, who shot up the, the Pulse nightclub, too, until they found out he might be gay? Didn't they originally take credit for that? I, like, I, like, he said ISIS. Exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah. But that's, and that's, that's. That's what I mean. That like when we say oh, ISIS, ISIS doesn't sue us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They sued us for slander. We didn't do this. Technically, we're not responsible for what somebody else decides to draw from our teachings. That's I, I, it, people adopt this mindset, and and I, you know you could say, well, they become radicalized on the internet or whatever kind of scary language you want to put around it. But they find this this set of ideas and they adopt it, and that becomes. ISIS. Thanks, Rick. And yeah, it, uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but sorry, I was going to Rachel here, uh, who said there's a great quote about something. Yes, Rachel. Hi, good morning. Uh, there's a quote from the West Wing, uh, right after 9-11, they did an episode, and, well, this is a really good quote, is um, something along the lines of, you know, Islamic extremists is to Islam what the KKK is to Christianity. That's great. You know, every religion has has a effect like that. It doesn't mean that all of them are. It's kind of the point no, you guys are getting at. The, yeah. the difference is, too, by the way, is that a lot of times KKK is the extreme of Christianity, um, but the KKK has pretty much been reviled by people and has been completely... There's no apologizing for the KKK. Uh, but, but, of course, but of course the West Wing uh, w would need to do that. Like... I'm, I'm sick and tired of people feeling the need to make these statements that are like, you know, it's not all, I don't, I know that. I don't need to be told that. I don't need to be preached to fucking Hollywood about that. Okay, I get it. I know it's not all Muslims. 
I don't think it is. Right. So stop assuming I'm saying all Muslims when I talk about this. Do you know what I mean? Like and that's another thing. Whenever you talk about Islamic terrorists, people think you're talking about all Muslims. No, we're not. And here's what happens: is that thank people, you, Rachel. Yeah, it's a good point, Rachel. Um, but I think people say like they go terrorist, 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 and the word they're leaving out is Muslim. Yeah. And so then people go crazy on the other side, and they start tweeting and and going on the news and going everywhere and being like, why won't anyone say it's Muslims? Why won't anyone say it's Muslims? And then people respond, well, it's not all Muslims. And you're like, I know it's Muslim terrorists, it's Muslim extremists. But the word that's missing is Muslim. So that's what I'm filling in. And then, I mean, on the other side, the people who think it's just Muslims are, are all doing this and blah, blah, blah. There's a word you're missing, too. And the word is extremist. Like, put yeah. the two words together right. and label this group of extremists that all practice this one extreme version of this one religion as what it is. When, when there's a guy put him in a bucket. When there's a guy like Dylan Roof who goes out and shoots all these black people, no one had any issue Labeling what he was or labeling why he did it, right? Uh, he's a right. You know, no, no one thinks it's a reflection of all white people. No one thinks it's a reflection of all Christians. It's, this guy's an animal. He's a racist, and this is why he did it. This is who he is, and this is why he did it. That's yeah. all. I think that's all people want when something like this and, uh, I mean, comes up. And I love the idea of, of Muslim people. And when you talk to Muslim people, they do stand up and say like, "This stuff makes us sick." Like people who just live day to day practicing Islam, they're like, "This terrorist bullshit makes us sick," and like it. It makes every it makes people think that this is what we're about when it's not. But that voice is not heard because we're too busy just trying to protect, 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 protect. Yeah, I don't know if this is true, Mike and PA. Um, I don't know much. Hello. Hey Jim, Sam. Hey. Yeah, hey, man, chatter on the dark web about uh, ISIS wanted to recant the story about or recant the claim that that he was actually uh, with them because they found out that he was an extremist, but he actually just wanted to go see the show and was afraid to admit it. So when they found that out, they set the bomb off on him right as he was going to buy some shirts. Wait a minute. He was afraid to admit that he wanted to go to the show, but he went with a bomb on him? <laughs> doesn't make any yeah, sense. He, we'll he had a suicide vest on. And when they, they were figuring out, like, why is it taking them so long to, you know, detonate this bomb? That's and a, that's what they did. Like, I get it. So, so I, I get it. I get what the theory is. So like, okay. uh, so this this theory that this guy. All right, Mike. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. I'm only and I'm only re-clarifying it because his phone was not great. But his theory is that uh, because the the bomb went off after the show. Once they left the arena, like they were on the concourse area where the merch and stuff is sold, and that's when this guy's bomb went off and, and killed all these people. So his theory is that this guy was supposed to go to the concert and blow up his suicide vest, but he was just there to enjoy the show. And then somebody else remotely blew up the suicide. Yeah, I think that's a silly point. There is something fact. weird though about it going off after the show outside, like the the, the inside the venue. You I know, like, wouldn't you if you're gonna do it? Wouldn't you do it like in the stands, like to create no as because much security to getting in. There's the, the because there's no security. It's almost like he's already in. He was inside was the, the venue. end of the concert. He was in. The, he'd gone he to the inside concert. the venue. He's just like like. I thought in, he was outside the venue. No, he was uh, in the venue. Had he gone through the security area though? Because I, I was under the impression he did not go through the security. Yeah, area. Yeah, and there were there's articles this morning about how lax the security was at at the venue. But I was I was under the impression he, um, he was a. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Near was, one of the venue's exits, so he was near the exit. And I'm wondering if he didn't have to go through all the the security to, to get through. That was what no, I was because really you can you can hear the explosion mm -hmm. like from inside the venue, and I don't think you. I, I don't know. Well, if the concert was over, and he, that was to me. I mean, like, if you're going to do it, that's a time to do it because that's when every you know where everybody's going to be. I think that he showed up there. I think that he showed up there and literally just did it at an exit where all these people were, were gathering to leave. So you don't think that he was a fan and he waited to hear side to side and then... <laughs> no, I don't think he was a concert goer. It's a good song, though. Yeah. And I don't think he was there for the show, and I, I, think, I think he was remotely detonated. I Maybe he was I, nervous about when to do it. I guess they don't know, but uh, everything, that I, it's, everything that I was watching last night, it made it seem like he was inside the venue. Yeah. I thought he was outside. I, I, maybe I'm crazy. I literally thought he was outside well, the venue. Think, yeah, I mean, I guess he... I think it'd be tough to get that many people outside the venue because yeah. that's when they start spreading. Like well, the fact that and the show it, literally just ended. Yeah, the fact that he did it on the concourse when everybody's left the arena is when those concourses get packed with people, and that's when he lets off the bomb. So you well, can was he an employee there? Did he get in? Because the concourse, I understand. But I, you just wanted to get where there was going to be a lot of people. That's and he knew. It. That's all it is. That's it. But I don't think he was in the show. I don't think. You, first of all, you would have done it during the show because if you're in the show. The time to do it is in the middle of the concert. The no, I, I, I agree. That's that what I'm saying. So that's why I don't think he was. It was. I think that that was just the way it was planned. Um, you know, because the, you, you know you'd have more people even concentrated in the show area than maybe, you would. Maybe maybe was that's his plan was, and then he just kind of got lost in the show. He's like, oh, this is pretty dope. It's actually pretty good. He's tapping his toe, and she's like, thank you, and he's like, oh, oh no, 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 yeah, no, I don't know. I don't think he was detonated uh, remotely. I think that he just, uh, that was when he showed up. And plus, probably security at the end of the show is a lot less than going in. 
Coming out, they're not checking anybody for anything. You're just a guy milling about. They're just trying to get everybody out the door. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Uh, yeah, is there any video like or, or audio where it's in the background? You can hear it? Yeah. yeah, there's a. Oh, there is. There is, yeah. Like, there's a guy who is uh, in the parking lot waiting. I think it was like a parent who was waiting in like a, a parking lot that was like a block. Not, not Maybe not a full block, but like across the street or whatever. And you could hear, he's like listening to the radio and he just hears a, a blast go off. It's like a dash cam video. Can we hear that? Because I, I haven't heard it. This is not good. I mean, there's, there's also plenty of video from inside. Uh, of that, I've heard, I've seen people the running, but I mean, to just hear the blast, if you can yeah, hear yeah, where it I, is. Yeah, I, CNN played one this morning. I try not to watch them because it's just... It's tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kids, kids like my daughter's age. Sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's it. But yeah, there's definitely uh, video of people that were still filming the concert. Yeah, yeah, and, you can just hear it coming from mm -hmm, some direction. Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely hear it. I'm hitting play. How come you're not oh, playing it, Troy? Oh, yeah. Right. No, you're kidding. highlighting the words. Yeah. You try YouTube. Have you, you know, asked about that mouse again that's fixed? The mouse is fixed. It's just for some reason the operator error. Well, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. You think he's that operator error? Yeah. His instinct is never to go to YouTube. He always goes to weird websites for videos that I don't just, play. I Google it. That's all. Ooh. All right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you guys talk? <laughs> he's getting nervous. No, no, no. Oh, good. Well, we'll just wait for you, dude. Uh, we just wait for you. Yeah. Like, we're, but we're kind of in a rush. We want to get to the next point. Yeah. So if you could do this, because right now it's kind of... It's kind of taking a little while, taking a little longer than I thought it would. The internet, it really does stink in this building. Well, some of the internet operators. But not good. Not good. This is it. Jesus. No! Like he had like a delayed reaction to it. That's the radio that the music is playing. There's another one from inside the venue. Hold on. Can't you can't tell where that so is. So he had like a delayed react because he heard and he must have registered. Oh my god. That was inside the venue. You heard that. That doesn't right? sound inside the venue at all. Well, it's, it's, on the, it's right outside. Outside. They're, they're, they're in the arena right now. Right. So it would have been, it would have come from the concourse or whatever. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, it didn't happen in the arena. So it was on the concourse. Yeah. When, when I'm hearing concourse for some reason, I'm thinking outside the venue. Because I heard it in the concourse, I'm thinking the area right outside the venue. And that's a, you know you know what the where yeah, they no, have, like, of course. the yeah. hot dogs. Right. Yeah. Um, did you see the guy who uh, real quick right after the story broke, he tweeted the joke about it. Who? This writer. He's just like a freelance writer. He was nobody until yesterday. He tweets out. Uh, uh, his name was. Uh, his name is David Leavitt. And he wrote on Twitter, multiple confirmed fatalities at Manchester Arena. The last time I listened to Ariana Grande, I almost died too. And like he tweets it out immediately. And I mean, Twitter destroyed him. Yeah. I it mean, was the, the, his, it's, it's, a, it's one of those things when you do a joke like that, you got to realize you're just going to take a lot of shit for it. And he took a lot. And people started like, you know, it said in his uh, Twitter profile where he worked as a freelance writer. So people were. Trying to trying to get in contact with where he wrote CBS PR had to tweet out like he does not work for us He's fucked, but the, again all of that is funny all that internet reaction to this guy's dumb joke mm -hmm. That's great, but you might want to focus it on something else about the story, <laughs> right? This guy making a dumb joke is not really the important thing um, You know, it's not a, it's ill-advised at that moment. It's stupid if it's for self-preservation Yeah, if it were, it's you know, you, if you do a tasteless joke like that in this day and age, you know you're going to get a lot of shit for it, and you got to weigh: is it worth it? Um, and if it's a bunch of dead kids, it's like it, but, it better be. A, it better have a point to it. It has no point. That was a bad one. Yeah, because it wasn't a well-written joke. But he goes like, uh, instead of people looking at it though and being like, "Oh, this guy's an asshole." Yeah, well, moving, that's a dumb joke. And then moving, moving on. on. And then moving on. That's all you do. You move no, on. There was no moving on. Of course not. And the retweets that he got on it are deceiving because it got quoted over and over and over. Sure, everybody and over wants to again. show. Everyone wants to virtue signal on how they wouldn't do a joke like that. Right. How about you just look at the joke and you go, oh, "That was a dumb joke. That was a kind of a bad timing." And then or whatever, and you move on. That's it. Yeah. Don't call his boss. You know, how about you want to call, 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 I mean, there's, there's, there's no ISIS's boss, but I mean, you know. <laughs> Excuse me, ISIS? Yes. Are you aware that one of your employees blew up a concert? But that is, in a way, what's frustrating. Because we, the people can't affect the guy who did it, or the people who did it have zero interest in anything you think or feel. Mm -hmm. We start doing this, like, little uh, peripheral thing where we start going after people who make fun of it, or who make the wrong point about it, or who say Islam when they shouldn't have, or don't say Islam when they should have. And, and we start just fucking pecking and, and infighting. Instead of kind of focusing on the animals it's amazing. who are responsible. It's amazing how quickly focus gets lost, isn't it? So uh, it I hope they didn't find Did the guy get fired or did he take it down? Or? He's a freelance guy. He uh -huh. ended up deleting it, but I mean, it took him hours to delete it. I don't even know why he bothered at that point. It was yeah. everywhere before he deleted it. 
Uh, but yeah, he's he's for sure the internet's public enemy number one for now. It'll for go now. it'll go away by tomorrow. Like, what happened to the guy who got in trouble in the Olympic Games? Didn't he do something or make some comment or joke? Who I believe you. I what did he do? Already. He worked for Breitbart or or something. I have no idea. Do you know what I mean? It, it was uh, he had tweeted something. What the fuck did he tweet? I don't know. It happens all the time, though. This guy goes, I've deleted the tweets, and so many people asked. All right. Deleted. Didn't he say? Oh, did he he say, said, I delete, I, I've deleted the tweet. What are you talking about? Fix, proofread. If, you're gonna, if, if the whole world, if the, if the entire Twitterverse is looking at you, proofread. It'll pass. You know, these, these things are 24 hours, 48 hours. They're mad at you, and they'll be mad at someone else. That's what yeah. they do. Yeah. The, the Twitter, Twitter anger is literally like a, it's like a weird. You ever see a cloud of insects mm -hmm. that flies through? That's what it is. It's like a cloud of insects, and they fly through, and then they buzz past you, and they go somewhere else. Yeah, if you just jump under a sheet <clears throat> while the insects are around, you can come out from under the sheet once the insects go away, and everything's fine. Everything's as it was. Uh, I can't remember the name of the guy in Brazil who tweeted something. Was it a joke or was it some tasteless comment, but he got in so much... Oh, <coughs> pardon me. The guy who did the gay trolling on Grindr. Okay, I vaguely remember. Um, do you know the guy Grindr story from Brazil? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I vaguely... I'm outing gay athletes. Right, I do remember this scandal. That was yeah, actually, that. that was a different thing. Um, yeah. that, but that, was, that was a real scumbag thing. I'm just, no, no, I'm just yeah, wondering what happened different. to him. I just remember, I remember he stopped tweeting for a while. Yeah, I, I don't know. I know this guy was a freelancer for what? Daily Beast, Access? Sorry. Yeah. And they scrubbed all of his content. Yeah. Yeah, they scrubbed, they scrubbed for access, it. For right? Access, wow. That, it is stupid when you, when you, working for SiriusXM, we still have to consider certain, like, all right, is this going to be a fucking major problem? And, I, and look, you know, you don't want to think that. We're even having an audience. Like, even if he's totally independent, the <laughs> fact that he has an audience, like, I can't think of any audience that would read that and be like, oh, it's actually pretty funny. You know what I mean? Like, anyone, because if, if you don't work for a company, odds are... You can't work for a company or have an audience. Like, you can't make your living either of those two ways and, and, and just decide to be like, oh, a bunch of kids are dead. I got a good one. Most, most people, though, are not, um, you know, yeah, pe people will still laugh at a harsh joke like that. I'm saying when you work, if it's, accurate, uh, if it's a decent joke. I mean, well, I'm well, laughing at that. That's a terrible. It wasn't a well-written joke, but no. the point is if you're, if you're uh, you know, if you work for a company, if you, if you have some affiliation with CBS, for your own survival as a journalist, you're just dumb. As a yeah. writer, you're just dumb. Yeah. Because you know there's going to be problems. You, you think there hasn't been things I wanted to tweet in the last few years, but I know. Yeah, like that's going to come fucking, back to bite me. Yeah. Because people, and it's not even, it's because people want to get you in trouble. People yeah. like getting people in trouble. Yeah. And they're going to make an effort to do that. So. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Anthony Jeselnik, that Troy is writing. Um, he did that, what, the Boston Bomber joke. And everyone knew Anthony did that. Like, that's, that was Anthony's style of humor. He's mean. Yeah, but he, he does that. Um, that's what he does as a performer. Right. But, um, and it it's always way too soon. And I think, and they always yeah, say that. that they always say way too soon. Uh, but there's... This uh, one was probably a little too soon. Comedy Central said something about it, but he didn't have his show the next year. And I don't know if that affected it at all. I always thought it did. Deep down, I always thought that was it was something that hurt him. Mm -hmm. But I might be wrong. Anthony may go, no, no, I did six more episodes after that. Nothing to do with it. I, I I, maybe I'm remembering that incorrectly. I don't know. This guy's also, uh, I read on Deadspin that he makes most of his money now from like uh, Twitch streaming and uh, promotion on Instagram. Right. That's probably going to go away. That's, yeah. But it shouldn't, like, you know, again. Well, it will I, because it, 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 it kind of should because... You're dependent on an audience. Like, it's not like... How come, but the guys who are not giving out... This is the problem. Guys who are not giving out real opinions that are legitimately shitty, yeah. they suffer no consequences for their shitty opinions. Like what? Whatever it is. Like, well, I don't think... I, the, you, it wasn't Islam, or it was... Or whatever the opinion might be. Yeah. That is a lot of times more dangerous if you want to talk about what's dangerous. Mm -hmm. A guy out there going, America must examine its policies, or England must examine it. Like, like, how come those guys can go out and fucking babble on and on from both sides of it and suffer zero consequences, no matter how wrong they are, but some dope makes a stupid joke, admittedly a shitty joke, and the penalty isn't it's, like, hey, dummy, that was well, tasteless, not, and he goes, oh, all right. It's just, this one is literally the audience speaking, I think. I don't think that it's a matter of a penalty. It's like, the other... The well, they scrub this content on some thing. So the audience... Speak, like, why, even no, the but audience, we're talking about... Why is the audience so involved? Why is the we're audience... We're talking about the way he makes his money on Instagram promotion, and if you don't have Instagram followers, you don't have people... Like, if you're no longer an influencer, because people don't like you then you can't make money as an influencer. But I don't think that he would no longer be an influencer. Like, I know what you mean, but I don't, I don't think that that would be the big... It's like, just look at him and go, ah, oh, the guy's a jerk-off, or what a dick thing to say, and then move forward. But if Who you, cares? So if you've made your living as a jerk-off, like, like you're, that's your thing. That's how you're an influencer. You're a jerk-off. Sure. The way some of these, like, political people, like, you know that Piers Morgan is going to say stuff that's going to piss people off. Right. But that's how he's made his living. Like, that's sure. that's the Piers Morgan brand. We know what we're getting with Piers Morgan. If, if that's not you... 
or you haven't been exposed on this level, like, you know, you have to, you have to, if, if this is your introduction to a larger audience and they reject you, then the idea of you making money because you have an audience is gonna go away. It's just, because your audience goes away. People are just, um... Like, for if you made a distasteful joke, I don't think, I think that, like, there might be some controversy, but your audience wouldn't suffer because you make distasteful jokes. Because there's none of them left. <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. six of them. <laughs> your audience wouldn't suffer any more than they would watching your show. My audience would look at each other and go, do you care? And the other guy would go, no, not really. <laughs> That'd be two of them. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like it depends on how you've, how you've promoted yourself. I mean, just the reaction. Just the fucking reaction to it. It's just so out of balance and out of whack. Like th This is where the energy gets focused on some dope. That I agree with. That, it's like that's what people, because people want to feel like they're doing something and they're too scared or too frustrated or don't know where to, to f a lot of times with terrorism like this, you don't know where to focus your anger because the guy is dead. Right. The guy killed himself. There is no necessary organization you can call and go after and the people who you hate hate you worse. Yeah. As much as you hate ISIS for this, they hate you. And here's what their argument would be. I guarantee you their argument would be. ISIS's argument? Yeah, their argument mm -hmm. would be, if you can go, how could they target children? Their argument would be, because your bombs kill our kids. Right. And this is this is what it feels like. Yeah, they're so, not looking for likability points. They're not looking for, uh, for, uh, for likability. No, they're not. I see a Photoshop. ISIS is mad at you for slandering them. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I'm relevant enough. I'm, I don't think I'm relevant on the ISIS scale. <laughs> that they'd be upset about slander? Uh, uh yeah. Uh, our president uh, made made a statement about okay. the attacks, and uh, you know, Donald. You talk about uh, uh, labeling. President the Donald is all about the labels. He does yeah. not mind labeling a person. He likes. He doesn't know. He likes to have names for things. He likes to know. Here's what I call this. Here's what I call that. So, uh, and he's never shied away from. Islamic extremists. He Islamic did in terrorists. Saudi Arabia, though. I noticed that. Yeah. Which, but again, that you know what? People are like, why didn't he say it? That was smart. That was actually him being smart. That people who are criticizing him for that, that was him being slightly diplomatic. You, you can't have it both ways. You can't say this guy sucks a pile of dicks. He has zero diplomatic ability. And then when he does something diplomatic and actually smart, yeah. um, go fuck him. Well, that was a smart move. It was there diplomacy. Were, there were times when Obama said it where it was cowardly. And there was times where Obama said it or refused to say it where it was really a smart move. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a balance. No one was mad because Obama didn't go into Saudi Arabia and scream Islamic terrorism. They were mad because he never said it. Right, because he would be here in the United States when an attack had happened, either here or somewhere in the world, obviously attached to Islamic radical yeah. radical Islam and not, not saying what it was. That's yeah. different. And people feel like he was being too appeasing and a little too uh, eggshell walking. You know, that's so if, you, if, if Trump is showing a little diplomacy, you know, give him credit for showing some diplomacy. I thought he gave a pretty firm fucking speech in Saudi Arabia, or was it Israel, I'm not sure about, no, it was in Saudi Arabia, about rooting it out and, 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 and get, getting rid of it, uh, getting it off your, out of your religious institutions, get, driving it out of your country. I thought that was a pretty good mm -hmm. speech. Yeah. I saw Roger Stone didn't like that he didn't say it. He oh, tweeted, yeah, he, he tweeted. Of course, Roger Stone didn't like he that. He's not happy that he didn't say yeah, but in I think that, he hashtagged it Jared's idea. In that, in, that, <laughs> in that case, I think Trump would have been wrong to say it. Not because, oh, you're cowardly and you're afraid. I don't think he was physically afraid to say it. But you're in that, you're in that country and the message is going to get lost. You don't like, think he's just another Washington cuck? <laughs> no, I don't. And I think people who are saying that, I think he's proven enough that he's willing to criticize. He's going there after having criticized uh, Islam publicly a lot. He's going there. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. already said this a bunch of times. I don't think he was afraid to say he's that. He's made his stance clear. I think they probably told him it's counterproductive. And do you want to go and have a few fucking dopes who think they're alpha males go, yeah! <laughs> you fucking dopes who think you're alpha? Shut up. I'm convinced. I think he made the right move. I'm convinced Roger Stone won't be happy until the world burns. Like, he just wants to see it all burn. You think he's just mad at Trump? Or is he jealous that Jared has that kind of influence? He's jealous at Jared. I think all the a lot of the uh, hardcore Trump people are mad about uh, are mad about Jared. Why? Because they don't like the fact that he has a differing opinion than a lot of them, and 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 he has so much power. And they also don't think that he deserves the power. You know what I mean? Because he's a uh, 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 the son-in-law. Yeah. So they think that he's kind of lucked into this, and he doesn't, or cucked into this. Oh, God, <laughs> what the fuck? The best part is, it's, it's just these fucking fake alpha males. Yeah. Shut your mouths. Yeah, yeah. But they, yeah, I mean, because he's got a differing opinion, and he's got so much power, they feel like he's softening, he's softening the Trump message. Yeah, but at the same, like, Trump has given him, like, a thousand jobs. Like, it's not like he's, you know, uh, just, like, like, Trump himself is like, okay, you're in charge of this, you're in charge of this, you're in charge right. of that. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they, he, he definitely did luck into it. He's worming oh, his yeah. way in. Oh, yeah. he is. But so far, he hasn't done anything that really annoyed me. He's a bright guy. I don't give a fuck about Jared. Yeah, but you're also. How a little... do you know he's a bright guy? Um, that's a good point. I guess I've, <laughs> I've seen him speak in the past. To be honest, I've, I've listened to him talk before Trump was president. Jim thinks we're talking about Jared Fogle, by the way. He's, oh. he's confused. Yeah. No, 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 we're not. No, but I, I just don't have an issue with it because didn't Bill uh, make Hillary in charge of health care? Of course, Whereas I, his wife didn't. You know, oh, yeah, no, 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 I don't. They I, all I, do I, it, I, so I, it's, I, it's I, almost like you're kind of used to the, the first family doing something. The issue is that he is softer. Than, than the other people. He's yeah, a he's a, probably a necessary. <laughs> yeah, I know all the guys who yeah, say cuss. I love the wow. Those guys. Whoa, dude, you're alpha. Gee whiz. What's wow. your name? Oh, you don't want to say. It. Okay. Have you ever? Have you, <laughs> Whoa. I, I prefer not to say. It. <laughs> have you ever heard a word so overused, uh, so misused? Mis it's, so it's fast. misused by people who who, who are implying. Everybody that, they don't, about that they don't like the beta, and I'm one of the only guys, and I, will, I, I have been using cuck for a long time, Yes, properly, might I say. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> In the mirror. <laughs> yeah, 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 so they don't like, uh, they, I mean, they just use the word cuck instead of pussy. Yeah. Because they think they can, like, cuck is a more appropriate word for some reason. Yeah, it's like, no, dude, that's not, you're saying it wrong. Yeah, I, don't like, I, don't like the, I don't like Saudi Arabia either, by the way. No? Oh, we don't have his, do we have any uh, email? Yeah, he has an email, he's emailing right now. Okay, great. Um... So let you want to hear what Trump said about I do, uh, yeah. what happened in Manchester? Sure. Solidarity. Can we, can we start over by people of the United Kingdom. Stand, okay. stand in absolute solidarity with the people of the United Kingdom. So many young, beautiful, innocent people living and enjoying their lives murdered by evil losers <laughs> in life. <laughs> I won't call them monsters because they would like that term. They would think that's a great name. I will call them from now on losers because that's what they are, they're losers. And we'll have more of them, but they're losers. Can you pause this for a second? You know, as much as it sounds like it's a dumb thing what he's saying, he's probably doing it really smart according to what FBI Profilers have said and things like that and people who talk about these people because what they what they don't want to be is Dismissed as small like they said that they always focus on like when someone goes and shoots a, a Fucking school up and they're called in the in the lair of the lion or the monster right. and those are powerful terms And they never he does have a horrible vocabulary. That's very true dude But there is something to be said for that because these fucking the way they always they said they should focus on what little small broken People. It's like Silence of the Lambs. Um, She's saying his her name. She's humanizing her. Yes, yes. Because now it's not like you're this like monster. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean there it, is something. It's the same. Uh, it's along the same lines. Like he's saying it for a reason. I agree with you. His vocabulary does suck, and, that, and that's where if Obama said that, you'd know why he did it. He would never say losers. <laughs> no. But but the point is, if he did say something like that, because losers is such a soft term, but. Uh, it's also, nobody wants to be a loser. It's also a business trick. Like it's not like the, it is the first time he's done stuff like this. Like he definitely, I'm sure, would talk about his competitors. Like he would probably have board meetings where he's talking about his competitors and just being so diminutive. It's like a uh, like Coke being like, oh, you know that other little loser beverage company, Pepsi. Like it, th these are these are not just political tricks. These are things that he's learned. I just yeah, I just don't know if this is as, as stupid as it's. It does sound dumb. I don't like think it's stupid. The U.S. president saying loser. It's, it's a word that we're used to. Fifteen year old saying you're a loser, dude. Like it's not a word that you're is used to being associated with a powerful person making a powerful or important statement. Do you but think it, he went off script? Oh you know, I don't God. know. You can see the moment he went <laughs> yeah, off script. you really can. You can see. I mean, losers might have been in the script. I don't know. It was definitely pre-planned. Losers was in the script, and his script, pre-planned. Yeah. But then he just kept going. Yeah, you can see, because he because he, he came up with the loser word. Like, that's his word that he's like, that's what I'm going to call them from now on. You don't think there's a speechwriter using loser? No. No. That loser was his thing. <laughs> the same way all the little nicknames, they were his. People would write his speeches for him, but he came up with Lion Ted, which is why he said Lion Ted over and over and over again. Like, he takes great pride in the great nicknames that he comes up Please with. Please tell me he doesn't put his, a fucking L by his forehead. <laughs> he doesn't do that, does he? I don't think so. Yeah, there's, there's probably a better way to say it but, that is, that sounds better than the way he's saying it almost anyway but if you <laughs> if you because you're right in, in the concept is a good concept it's a perfect concept because when he says I'm not gonna call them monsters because they would like that that's true like that he's making a good point 
he goes a little off the rails, but conceptually, he's right on the money. You can see when he starts to repeat the word losers, the second time he says the word monster is when he's done reading his script and he's just going to hammer home that he came up with the great word losers. Watch, watch. I saw you move back a little bit. That's good. By evil losers in life. Script. I won't call them monsters. Script. Because they would like that term. They would think Off that's script. a great name. Yeah. yeah, of course. Off script. There it is. They would think that's a great name. I will like, call I them. Yeah. I don't need a script. From now on, losers. <laughs> Because that's what they are. They're losers. <laughs> He's way off. And we'll have more of them. But they're losers. Just oh. remember that. Oh. This is what I've spent these last few days talking about during my trip overseas. Our society can have no tolerance for this continuation of bloodshed. Yeah, I like we that. We cannot stand a moment longer for the slaughter of innocent People. Back on script, by the way. Yeah. And in today's attack, it was mostly innocent children. The terrorists and extremists and those who give them aid and comfort must be driven out from our society forever. I like that. Yep. This wicked ideology must be obliterated. And I mean completely obliterated. And the innocent life must be protected. All innocent lives. Can you pause? Here's what Trump's problem is. Life when, when he talks. He doesn't have enough faith in, in what is being said, so he feels his, it's when he reiterates mm -hmm. things. He doesn't seem to understand that those words are powerful. That when you say these, you know, if you call people losers or broken or whatever it is, like you don't have to go, and that's what they are. <laughs> losers, we know. Well, he, also, he also lacks the capability to feel empathy. He's not an empathetic man. So when he starts to kind of dip into, let me be sensitive to some of the victim territory, it doesn't come across. He, because he can't just say it. Like if he had just said we have to protect innocent lives, like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to say, and you do kind of have to say that. But you don't have to say beautiful. No. When he, he said, yes, a lot of the lives were beautiful. <laughs> you're like, what are you, what are you talking, what do you mean? I don't, was that, like, just the good looking ones? Are you saying all lives are beautiful? I'm not exactly sure. Or I, I think he does feel it, but he's, tr he's trying to make the words show it, that he legitimately feels it. Right. And you don't need to paint, like, like I know what you're doing, like, he's afraid that the words are too small. Mm -hmm. And that if he says, innocent lives snuffed out, it doesn't carry as much weight as going, but they're beautiful, innocent. He's trying to let, like, to really get, right. do you understand hammer the this? point home, and, and we do. Yeah, we're like, yeah, we all feel the same way. And he's like, but they're beautiful children. Yeah, like, I mean, he's also a man with no emotion trying to prove to everyone that it. he has emotion. That's what it is. And he's also never had to make statements like this in front of the entire yeah, planet. He has no clue how to, he just, sometimes he has feelings. Yeah. Something like he's got feeling in his belly, like, oh, sad. Winning. Winning. Mad losing. You know, he's got, <laughs> he's got, he's like uh, uh, the very basics of that Pixar movie where he's got all the little Inside people. Out. Yeah, he's got all the little people in his head, but the, the mechanics are broken. So the little people in his head that are telling him which emotion to feel, that can't be communicated. Yeah, he's never had to like have compassion for just anyone. Well, he wasn't raised with it, you can tell. Right. Like, yeah. not like uh, his, I've been on the spectrum, I think. His dad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> his dad, and his dad, his dad didn't raise him with any emotion. His, you know what I mean? He didn't come right. from an emotional it's a household. Business family. Exactly. It's, it's cutthroat. It's like, we don't have time to, to do this or that. Where in reality, most American people take some time out to be sad about something. You don't think he's crying for like some random person that died? No, he has not. He has I don't not, know what he's like, to be honest with you. I don't know. He's probably more sensitive than you think. Um, I think towards his own family, probably. Correct. Because he has emotional connections to them. But yeah. I don't think he's the type of uh, selfless politician that would genuinely be upset over somebody else's uh, well-being. Uh, let's see the rest of the speech. Let's see. Let's see if he brings. I think it it's home. just yeah, ending. That's, pretty much it. that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. What are, what are the reviews on it all around the world? Um, or are people not even commenting? No, people are commenting. People. Uh, uh, is it positive commentary? Not. Not. No. Not generally. They're not. It's not. It's not going down as one of the great uh, "Make America Feel Better" speeches. That's where, But that's where a guy like Reagan was a master. That's where Obama was a master. Clinton. These guys. Even Bush, who had this clumsy kind of way sometimes, but there was something heartfelt when Bush talked. It was heartfelt. And, and look. Even when he was wrong. Mission accomplished. Like, that's gone down in history as one of the great blunders in speeches. Oh, his father, yeah. But when... Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry, no, no. That was yeah, 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 George yeah. Jr. Uh, George W. But at the time... We kind of felt better about it. That was a terrible, terrible mistake. It was a bad mistake. Yeah, the Even fair. when he went to, the, to, to Ground Zero a day after. Yes. 
Didn't he have? That was one. Of, I mean, that was one of the yeah. great. Like, yeah, he had a ni- like an eighty or ninety percent approval rating after nine eleven. Uh-huh. It's one of the highest in history because people just kind of liked how he handled it. Yeah, and pe- then people got impatient. He's not doing anything. He's not doing anything. And I remember his speech where he said, I, "We took the first strike against Al Qaeda and we did it with a stroke of a pen." And people were like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> but it was because he. I think he had signed something cutting off funding through so whatever it was. And then the made up word didn't help. The Iraq thing? No, it that really, that really, because the reasons he gave were not. That was a, right. That was a real. He blunder. kept switching the reasons. Yeah, that yeah. killed him. That ruined him. That yeah. really, that really did. Plus, it didn't really have much to do with 9/11 at all. Well, nothing to do with 9/11. <laughs> yeah, really, <laughs> nothing. It really, uh, in hindsight, that uh, yeah, was a bummer. But, but at the time, Giuliani, you remember, Giuliani was America's mayor. People all across the country loved Rudy Giuliani for a moment, and then he was going to. Uh, Run a third term because just to keep the city and Mike Bloomberg was like, no, the system will work as it is. We don't need blah blah blah. And then so Giuliani didn't run, and then Bloomberg became mayor and, and then, figured out a way to run for a third term. <laughs> yeah, he got his well third done, term. Mike. Yeah, good. good for you. People loved the uh, the police commissioner. Didn't he also go down in in shame? Was it Ray Bratton? Was it Kelly? I don't even know who no, it was. Wasn't it a Carrick or, or Bruce Carrick? No, Bernard. Oh, Bernard Carrick. Yeah, sorry, Bernard Carrick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We interviewed him. He went to jail. Yeah, mm-hmm. but at the time he was like the greatest thing ever. Like right after, right, right when that was happening, because it was all. Empathetically handled well, emotionally handled well. At the, yeah, I mean, the, when you see the president like at ground zero with a yes. bullhorn, like talking to first and a jacket or something, yeah, like, a jacket, like, and he feels like a real guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, he's like, acting like a real guy. I don't, I don't know that Trump would do that. Yeah, I don't think so. He's like, we're gonna get the losers. <laughs> what? <laughs> we will win They're this. Losers, you're well, winners. You're all gonna win. Yeah, he would have said words that don't mean anything. I think he doesn't understand that the words he's using don't mean anything in these moments to people. There's That's also, might be the problem. You know what else I bet is the problem that's just occurred to me that like he's been able to get away with speeches like this because who does he give them to? Who does he give the rah rah speeches to? His employees that are all. Yeah. They've already drank the Kool-Aid. Like, they're already on board with Donald Trump. Now, he thinks he can get in front of the American people because he's the president and he's the boss. So they've uh, now all of America has drank the Kool-Aid. And also in the business. And right, they in, haven't. In the business world, these speeches are fine. Losers. Right. And blah, blah, blah. And I don't even mind him using the term. I think he should have used it once. But I, I think there's a much better way to say it. <laughs> when you look at a speech like Obama gave after, after the Newtown shooting, that was a great speech. You, you, call, you hate Obama. You call the shooter a loser? <clears throat> He didn't mention loser. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my coffee is fucks my throat. I guess no, my coffee. That's okay. The coffee is a loser. The coffee is a loser. It's making me sound like a loser. That's right. But that was a great speech. Even people who hated Obama, when you cre- people thought Obama crying was fake, it was like really. That was actually a nice moment for a president to have. The same way Bush and 9/11 was a nice moment for a president to have. Would you like him or not? Like take he, yes. take, take that aside and just Reagan just the saying things that he said about breaking the surly bonds of whatever the fuck he said. <laughs> that was a good, you know what I mean? This guys Absolutely. tear down the wall. There's guys that have these great moments. I'm sure Clinton had some great moments too. Yes. Give them the credit for it. This was not one of those moments. This wasn't a great moment. It didn't uh, drive me crazy, but it wasn't. Someone is saying that it was very, it was very Trumpish. It was, it was very like, oh yeah, that's there he is. <laughs> yeah, that's that's our guy. <laughs> Jude in Boston has a, a comment about the bomb going off, and maybe this is it. Jude, what are you saying about the bomb? Is it inside or outside? Comment. Go. Your turn. Hey, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Sam. Thanks, man. Beatles channel. Jude, baby. hello. Channel eighteen. He was on hold for 40 minutes, now he's gone. <laughs> he Don't said, make it bad. He said the uh, bomb went off at a choke point. So it, uh, Daily Mail has a, a photo up, which... It's my nickname for myself. Huh? Daily Mail? Daily Mail. It's so stupid. It's my favorite <laughs> cologne. So... It's awful, too. Stop trying to save it. Oh, oh for two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is... Hold on, let me the conveniently placed... Hold on, let me get the conveniently placed sound. <laughs> okay, move all your newspapers. We can just jump in here and be a little... Thanks, but... All right. So you can see it. What's the picture? <clears throat> you can see where it went off. So so basically it's a concourse. Yeah. Uh, You're right, yeah. Like those doors right there go into the venue and then that's like kind of like the So right, there's no catch. security. Right. Yes. Okay, so we were all weirdly right. In, in a way, yeah, it wasn't like yeah. literally outside, but, but it was, it was beyond also... the security, which is what I thought. Yes. Okay, that's why he did it there. Yeah, because yes. you didn't have to go to the show, you didn't that's have to sit to the concert. That's where everybody get gets in. off to go to the trains, and and, it's just a, and it would have been very, very heavily populated, mm-hmm. but there's no security. Right. And as everybody's pouring out, you just file in and do right. it. So the arena's going to respond to this by saying, uh, mm-hmm. we're going we're gonna to change the way we do things. The security on that door, we're going to move them to the other door. Yeah, security's just going to be outside. Yeah, we're going to put them in front of the Is that what they're really course. saying? Well, no, I, mean, I, imagine, I, mean, like, I imagine that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, the first victim of the terror attack is named as a girl who tweeted Ariana Grande hours before the concert and told her, so excited to see you tomorrow. Was that a picture of them together? Yes. Looks like it. From uh, a meet and greet or something. That's where all the money is. Meet and greets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they figured it out. Yeah, they did. That's how they kept their, uh, oh, no, you don't have to buy the album. No, don't even worry about it. We don't make money off albums. We make money off meet That's and greets. Which is funny because not to, not to get into it, but it's basically just uh, scalping your own tickets. 
because you're you're selling a seat that would have been a hundred dollars yeah. for like a thousand dollars, right? Because it comes in this package, right? You get to take a photo with me, and mm-hmm. it's a front row seat, and you're like, well, well, the front row seat is usually like hundred fifty bucks, right? Yeah, so you're charging eight fifty for the you just pay for the meet and greet photo with me. I've sold Basically. meet and greets, I know, but never for a lot of money. How much do you get for a meet and greet? Eight fifty bucks. Oh, it was nothing. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't pay that. No, but a lot of people didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody does. I mean, that's where it's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and they can... let you they let you sit in sometimes for the uh, sound they... check. Sound check, yeah. yeah. Is Islamic State, do they delete these Twitter accounts? Who? Twitter? Uh, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, Twitter's got their they do. Their, their policies or whatever. I mean, uh, who, like that guy there who tweeted that. Can we see how, many, how long has that guy been there? How many followers does that person have? Yeah. I mean, I'm just curious as to... How long a Twitter account that has been when guys like Milo are getting banned for saying dumb shit or for salty commentary Yeah, or all these other guys are getting banned for this nonsense. You think he's verified? <laughs> I doubt he's verified. The terrorist <laughs> There you go click on the you can click on it in the description. Nope, not the photo. Oh, Troy. Oh, you're still. You, you, what are you, you doing? Back. He's so old. <laughs> he's so old. <laughs> right in the go, description. Go to his name. Right in the, right in the yeah. text. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Suspect. okay. He's just, he's been around for so long, Troy. <laughs> right? It's because the young people, they do it so quick. It's amazing to watch. Well, you guys make me nervous. <laughs> okay, Ariana so. Grande, by the way, is canceling her, uh, or, or at least postponing her. And tour. we talked about that before. What's the right thing to do? I do understand both sides of it. Like, as a, again, do you cancel or do you go, I guess it is hard to perform after this, but then a party was like, do you just, do you do it because you're like, uh, I think it's one of those things where it's like, okay, we have to. We have to keep going. We have to push forward. You have to, and it also makes people feel better in a way. Like I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer to that is. I guess I can understand. She's probably so fucking devastated. I mean, I get what you're saying. Because WWE put on a show like two days after 9/11, and it was like the coolest thing ever. Like, but, if, but if it, it was, happened at a WWE the show, difference. they may not like. You know what I mean? Like, then all of a sudden it's very personal, and yes. she, people may not know if she's a target, or they may go, "Oh, you want to do more shows here? We'll target the next one." And just the trauma of like it happening at your show, and you know that and like, your fans. Yeah. If you if you hadn't, done, there's got to be some guilt because as Incorrect as it is, you know in your head as a performer, if you had decided to take the night off, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, and she's probably so fucked up right now. Exactly. They said she's just in no condition. That's probably what the main part of it is. She's probably in no condition to go on stage. Yeah. How can, every, every person you look at could be a potential murderer or a potential, or, or you're looking at these people like, are these people going to be killed as they're walking out the door? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or you just look at them and be like, I looked at the same faces last yeah. night and they're dead. Yeah, that's, it was just awful. I think they're saying 22 have died and 59 are injured. Just what a what a weak, a weak soft organization. Yeah, where a you're limp targeting dick organization. You're targeting eighteen year old and seventeen year old girls. Just that's losers. Yeah, you know what yeah. I call them? I call them losers. Yeah, maybe that's not the and you know why? Term. You know why I call them losers? Because that's what they are. And there's going to be more of them. Losers, that is. Like, you didn't have to say there's going to be more of them. Yeah, well, yeah see, we do know that. I mean, but you, you probably didn't need to say it. Say it. We're on an attack. From losers. <laughs> what? Uh, it is miserable, though. What a miserable, depressing. Yeah. Ugh. You see your homegirl, uh, Melania Trump, is back by the Donald's side? She is, yeah. They see this video of her swapping his hand away at one point. Did you see that? <laughs> no, look, she wants to be the first lady, I think. Look at the video uh, from Saudi Arabia where she bats his hand away. It's really funny. Yeah, she wrote, broken from the bottom of my heart. I am so, so sorry. I don't have words. Who, Melania? Yeah. No, uh, she probably wants to say that. No, uh, Ariana Grande, that was her tweet. You did it right. That's the first time in an hour you said her name I right. I said her name right earlier. I didn't get any credit. Props to you. Thank you. Props to you. Oh, boy. Now we're going to... There it is. They're walking on a red go, carpet. Buddy. And they'll focus on watch. Right there. Yeah, we'll tweet out the video. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, I don't know why. And then he touches his jacket. I mean, he was rejected. It's a brick! But I wonder if... What, rejected! Was that because she didn't want to hold his hand? Or is that a protocol break there? No, he's, she's tired of his shit. I, I don't was, know. That was not first lady president. That was husband and wife. Okay. I'm not holding your hand. <laughs> Watch this. That was like, oh shit, I'm in trouble, but I'm at work. Fuck. <laughs> That was, that was, god damn it, just hold my hand and we'll talk about it after work. Is that, are you not supposed to hold hands there? Or, or, no, I don't you know. can always hold yeah. the first lady's hand. I guess you can. It's the sanctity of the, of the American marriage. This is the right. white picket fence. But I'm not crazy to think that. There are protocol things. The there U.S. presidents protocols. hold the hands. Hands of these other men. The Trump's half a curtsy was funny too. <laughs> Can't lie. And this is the thing: like when a president is overseas, and there's a thing where you do. Like I didn't give a fuck that Obama bowed. It was just a moment where you're just trying to be polite. You're it's not a hundred. Per- it's just a thing. It doesn't mean anything. Right. But that uh, means something. When Melania Trump snaps her hand away, something. that's oh, that's not a that's not a cultural thing. That means something. Melania Trump. Donald did something. 
that has pissed her off. I don't know if it's uh, she's just sick. Of the, the shit's just been building and building, and she's tired of him making her look like a fool. Uh, or if there's something like specific, maybe they had an argument on the way to wherever it was that they were going, and she hasn't forgotten it. She can't put her first lady face on. Right, she Claire does. Underwood wouldn't do that. Who? Claire Underwood, Francis Underwood's first lady. Oh, who's that? House of Cards, oh. bro. She's never had to right? deal with so much hate towards her. No, she's not. Well, the, and, and the people she's friends with, who are a lot of immigrants like herself and a lot of gay guys, like they all hate. Like the people that people, she values hate her husband. And people, that's got to suck. People used to love Melania just because she was hot. She Imagine getting to live your the existence. I have. Okay, well, for the rest of us then. Imagine. <laughs> imagine, sexy. imagine. I know what that's about. Imagine getting hot chick. Approval. Yeah, it's fucking awful. <laughs> then people start hating on me. Is that what happened? Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, they just started hating. Start hating on me. How do you deal with that? You get you get hot guy energy all your life. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the all of a sudden the hate? It's crazy, man. It's it so is. Hard. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet it's really tough. That's why I didn't shave today. I didn't notice. Me, did. You didn't shave either. I only I shave Slept like that shit together. Two or three times a week. I can't shave every day. Why? I shave with an electric razor. I get bumps. Ew. What's that? Ew. Bumps are icky. No, they're not. It's I just... shave smooth as silk. That's because you have wispy girl hair. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. I do. But yeah, that was. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, that could be it. Maybe she's gotten hot chick energy all her life, and all of a sudden people are like, "Fuck you!" And she's like, "What? How did this happen? How did this happen? And Why then, do you hate me?" And now, and because your husband, I don't even hate you. It's because your husband. And now she's mad at him. Plus, I totally believe all the reports that she does not want to do this. She probably doesn't. You know, you said like, we weren't. You said you weren't going to win. He's like, I know, yeah, but like, look what happened. She just wants to be a mom. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Like, a wife. She has a kid. She's married. She's got billions in the bank. She doesn't want, and she also doesn't want to be a death threat target. So she probably doesn't want. Yeah. She just probably doesn't want like secret service everywhere. Like she probably liked the idea of a couple of beefy security guards getting her in and out fast. No one can bug her. But nobody wanted to kill her. Yeah. Nobody wanted to kill her husband. But now a he's a legitimate. Fucking Al Qaeda threat. He's, her he's son's threat. life is turned upside down. Her right. son's life is literally. Terrorists would love to kill her son just because it's the president's son, and and for the rest Plus, of their lives, they are going to have yeah. to walk around with Secret Service because of this decision her husband made. Even day to day, people are theorizing like about her son. Everybody's got opinions about her son now. There's a huge difference between apprentice fame and president fame. She enjoyed the apprentice fame. Like that's fun. Yeah, and I've heard that she's super like self conscious about her. Uh, Titty shots? Uh, yeah. <laughs> About her ability to like speak English. And that people mocked her. Even though she's actually brilliant, she speaks five languages. Yeah, and her yeah. speech was amazing. It was super good. Yeah. It was really good. It was almost as good as Michelle Obama's. Yep. I what? thought it was even better. She can, uh, yes, she can uh, plagiarize in five different languages. <laughs> yeah. But she's actually a brilliant person. I mean, if you can speak five fucking languages, you're brilliant. I'm sorry. You can speak two. I, I, I Stop I trying to like... put yourself in the brilliant category because you know a little French. I know zero French. All right, I want to make sure that. You know when we go up to, to visit my wife's family and they just talk and talk and talk and they could be saying whatever they want. We all know who they're all talking all about. Probably about me. Okay. Okay. How do you say why in French? No idea. Okay. Okay. I picked up none of That's it. That's what they're saying to her. They look at you and they look at her and they go, okay. Tu, tu piensas que si puedo hablar en un otro Pourquoi? language, Pourquoi? yo soy brillante? Pourquoi? I think you just said three different languages. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm fluent in Spanish. No, no. How, how do we say it? Let me play this, Troy. Can we play this? I want to hear how it sounds. Okay. Pourquoi? 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 So the next, <laughs> they, say, they say that when they point to me? Yeah, they look at you and they go, pourquoi? Yeah. They go like this, oh, pourquoi, pourquoi? They look at her, and then you notice they show her pictures of probably other like high school guys in French. Pourquoi? <laughs> yeah, it's been 10 years. They're, they're, they don't wonder. Pourquoi? <laughs> oh, the sad like that? Yeah, pourquoi? At first it was pourquoi. And then it's pourquoi. And now it's pourquoi. Pourquoi? Pourquoi? Charles thought that was a cool nickname. He thought that was like a, like a ferocious nickname. Like he was pourquoi. Yeah. You know, in French, Travis is actually pourquoi. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat. Let's 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 break and uh, I want to talk about something private, sexy. <laughs> what? I don't want to talk about anything private with you. And we should discuss when we come back. We'll keep talking about this, but there's a little uh, little shit going on around here that we need to talk about. You mean some uh, some faction talk beef? That's our that's our new segment, faction talk beef, where we just give you the uh, the roundup on all the beef that's being served across faction talk. I don't know if my Pittsburgh date is up on the website, so I'm going to be in Pittsburgh June 30th through July 1st. August, uh, I think, 5th is going to be the Borgata. There's a bunch of dates going on sale. I'm going to announce a tour very soon. But I do hope the guys want to come see me. So uh, go to PittsburghImprov.com. It's guys? Friday, Saturday. What's that? You said the guys want to come see me. I hope you guys want to come see me. Oh, oh, you meant the audience. I know Us. the guys are. I hope something with a cunt shows up. <laughs> 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 it's going to be all fucking 
all guys. Um, all right, we'll be back in a minute. And uh, who do we have today? We have uh, cool, Keith, cool Keith, the legend, and the return of Mary Jean, uh, finally, which is nice. We didn't have to get Cool Keith wings this time. No. Wow, he must really like us. No wings, no all right, guys, uh, hang tight, BRB. Oh, we should have come back to a fake argument. Why? It would have got people buzzing. <laughs> you like that? Welcome to the show, Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. What here a in show. the morning. So far, uh, so good. Yeah, I think it's been a, a fun one. We uh, wanted to also discuss, we've been talking about this shitty terrorist attack all morning, of course. But I, I also want to talk about, there's, there's some, uh, a little bit of malarkey going on here on the channel. And if, I learned my news from Twitter, as everyone does. It's the best place. Well, at least nice. you find out what's going on. I'm Wait. smacking my lips like a girl. And you don't sit there having to read all these pesky articles with all this stupid information. You get a nice 140 character summary. It's like the greatest cliff notes ever. And the, uh, there's apparently a, a bit of strife. I, I don't know if it's on Nick DiPaolo's side or if it's just... Jason Ellis not liking Nick or not liking things Nick has said. I don't think Nick's ever said anything about Jason that I've known. But I, I, it, it was, uh, I guess Jason was saying he didn't want him on the channel or he wasn't happy that he was on the channel. Yeah, well, Jason said that before. This wouldn't be the first oh, time. Oh, he had. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. Jason uh, had said that before that he was not happy that Nick DiPaolo was on the channel because I think the original uh, thought was that Rude Jude was going to come over, as was Jason Ellis. And I like Jason. As I've said many times, I was happy when he joined the channel, even though we lost a replay, but it was okay. Yeah. Um, and I was all for Jude joining the channel, too, because for those of you that don't know, Jude does afternoons on Shade 45, and he says that he wants to get into talk radio, and he's kind of, he's hilarious. I've had yeah. him, you know, I had him on my show a bunch of times, and I love the guy. I thought he'd be an awesome fit for the channel. Yep. Um, and to my knowledge... Getting Jude over here was way more complicated than it should have been, and I don't know whose side it was on. Might have been uh, his management right. side, or it might have been on the Shade 45 side. It's, Shade 45 isn't just a channel here, right? Because the guy in charge of Shade 45 is Eminem's guy. It's like there, there's, it's not just Eminem's name on it, and then it's just any serious channel where people can be moved around. Everything does have to go through Eminem's people. And we found out a while ago that Nick was coming on. Again, it didn't work with Drew. We waited for a while. Yeah, that's what, was, that's what the holdup was, actually. I was very happy when I heard it was Nick DiPaolo. Me I, too. I, I hadn't even considered Nick DiPaolo. I, I literally thought it was going to be Craig Ferguson <clears throat> because Craig has been here doing shows. So Nick's a really, really funny stand-up. And he's caustic. Nick is a caustic communicator. Like, that's how his, his jokes are. And when Nick talks about saying the word faggot or the thing like that, like, if you didn't know Nick DiPaolo and you think, like, well, why does he hate gay people? He really doesn't. And I, and I know this because, first of all, I've known Nick for almost 20 years. And I've also been around Nick, around gay comedians, a lot more than you realize. Nick interacts with gay people. He's, he's not some yeah, dude. Yeah, I get it. No, no, no. You don't I understand. Know what no, Nick's no, 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 no. I don't mean just some little... dicks, which he does do. Oh. No, oh, okay, Nick's an open-minded guy, but no, like I, <laughs> there's a, I've seen him for for many many years, uh, interact with gay people, and he doesn't give a shit. Well, when, when Nick resists, what he what he hates is, is like with the word faggot or it's the word nigger. It's not that you want to go around calling people this or you want to yell at it. He'll say like, you can't even call a guy a faggot. He's probably talking about it in daily life, and I think. Guys like Nick resist this, resist being told how to communicate, and they resist being told that everything they think is homophobic or sexist or, or, or whatever it is. So then you push back kind of harder because you feel like you can't do the humor you want to do. Um, and even if he is, like, even if he is fucking more caustic than you like, and he says shit that you don't like, you know, kind of. I like the fact that it's 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 like that on the channel. I like the fact that you have you know Jason being Jason. Fine, be who you are, and maybe Jason's a bit more sensitive to it because he's kind of newer. In, in, in talking about this stuff. He's bi. Yeah, I mean, great. great. I mean, look, I've been talking about trans women for a long fucking time. And it's, not, it, it's, not, it's not something I deserve an applause. I don't give a fuck. It is what it is. Well, here's what I, here's what I, I, I was listening to that. And so Jason uh, had an is, has, has issues. Nick is very right-leaning. Yes. You know what I mean? And so Right-leaning. He's fucking propped up on his right elbow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also angry. And so he can come across any number of ways to people who don't agree with him. But when I heard that Jason Ellis was, was saying that he was going to represent the LGBT people on this channel, I said to myself, now look here, it's one thing if you, you, feel like you, should represent if you run the channel. No. I immediately thought my co-host has sucked way more dicks than anyone else on the channel. Your co-host said that in the mirror. And he's been doing it, <laughs> and he's been doing it way longer than it was cool. So, you know, the I don't think that that's right. Well, the, the reality is, it's like, I, I understand being like, you, you don't want to be a fucking doormat. And I, I, I listen to what Jason said, and I, I, I know what he was saying. Like, he, you know, he just wants to feel like, hey, man, you don't want to feel like you're being marginalized or treated like a I, I get it. But you can't ask a guy like Nick to not be who he is. It really is. You, you need to let that guy 
Because a lot of people feel that way where they're resisting. Like, they say, they say, I don't want it in my face all the time. Because they feel like a lot of times when, when uh, you know, you're showing a lot of gay couples on TV, they're like, oh, God, show business is just shoehorning this shit. And not only are they shoehorning it, but they're telling Nick, like, all those jokes you make, you're fucking, you're a piece of shit for doing it. Right. I'm, you're I'm, again, I haven't talked to Nick about this. I'm just surmising as a guy who knows him. That that's where a lot of his opinion comes from. He's not some hateful guy who fucking hates people. I've seen him at the cellar for years. Just interacting with people. He doesn't give a fuck. So Nick was doing a story. He was talking about a story on his show. He's on at six, by the way. Is this going to completely contradict what I said? Maybe it will. I don't, I don't know what story he was talking about. Jason comes on after us, and Nick comes on at 6 p.m. Eastern um, here on the channel. Yeah. And uh, Nick was apparently, and I believe, Travis told me, because I didn't, I heard Ellis's Do rant. Do we have any of it? Yeah, we'll have a couple of clips. Okay. But um, I heard Ellis's rant, and I hadn't heard the Nick stuff that he was talking about, but Travis told me what he was talking about was Nick... It was talking about a story of a baseball player who was using some kind of derogatory slur, whether it was faggot or cocksucker. Or it was I think some, it was faggot. It was right, yeah, but, yeah. but we don't know for sure. You said right. I, I've watched the video, and, and I'm I'm I would say I'm ninety percent sure. Sure, yeah, that's what it was. Right. So he's saying that, and he gets in trouble with the team, and he was suspended for two games. And Nick was talking about that story, correct? Correct. And he was saying that uh, it was ridiculous that he was suspended, and blah blah blah. Right. And it ends up in a conversation with a lot of Nick's listeners uh, about. You know, we used to be able to say this. We used to be able to say that. And my, what I'm guessing is that the conversation was really about PC culture run amok. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even hear that. And that was what my guess was. It, it's a reaction to being told, "Don't joke about this. Don't say that." It's 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 a, a it's it's a reaction to uh, being told what you can and can't say. Now, I am I I don't think I think that the argument about he should be able to say faggot is like. So on its last legs, yeah, I think that so it's too. ridiculous. I mean, that that is it. It literally sounds like it's coming from another period in time. Th that's one Nick is gonna have to. Like, Nick's probably gonna have to throw the white flag on that one. That that's it's it's one. It's, like, it's just, um, well, yeah, so to speak. <laughs> but you're gonna have to kind of go like, eh. um, but, unless there's a reason to use it, or if, or if you're joking with your friend. I still don't think it's a problem if you're joking with two buddies are joking. If you're going, ah, come on, don't be a fag. It's a much different thing than calling a gay guy a faggot, where gay guys have been beaten to death while that was being yelled at them. So, but and and. I don't even think like that, and that's fine. It goes back to what we were talking about before with this guy on Twitter. Like, this is what Nick has done, has always done. This is sure. what I would expect a conversation to be like on Nick DiPaolo's show. I don't know if uh, Jason Ellis was uh, uh, sold on this idea that he would have any kind of control over the channel. Yeah. You know, we're joking. And again, I hate breaking the fourth wall. But none of us are in charge of the channel. No. The people who are in charge of the channel... Are the bosses and Travis and they call Travis does have a lot of juice. Yeah, um, it's usually in his beard um, <laughs> <laughs> But it's uh, it's gender one of those it's, it's one, <laughs> What'd you say gender, gender fluid, <laughs> gender fluid. <laughs> It's one of those things where they called it faction talk simply out of a lack of creativity Yeah, they not already, because of Jason was gonna have more juice on it But literally they just couldn't think of another name They said we've invented we built we created this brand faction and we were like there is no brand faction But they were like we've created this brand faction and so we're just gonna call it faction talk because we already created that brand and we don't want to create another one that was literally the conversation. It was like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, then this isn't a fight that you. It was made clear this isn't a fight that you can win. We've created this brand, and we don't want to create another one. Do okay, you, but do you think Jason? Like, he doesn't strike me. Jason never strike me as a guy who's really sensitive about language or like telling you what you can joke about. Is this like is him reacting this strongly to something like this? Just what happens when something is new to you, or when you're starting to just talk about it or be open about it, and now you're seeing it through a totally different lens because now, oh, I'm standing on this side of the fence now and I'm, like, I'm uncomfortable with hearing these words. Whereas if you had been talking this way for a long, long time, you would understand like this, it, it doesn't mean it. it. You know what I mean? It's like these words aren't any more serious this than anything else. This is a new else. thing. Yeah, I'll, yeah, you know, I think that that's a good point because it did uh, come across to me a little bit like when like a kid in school first learns what racism is or yeah. first learns what homophobia is and they start calling everything out that they see like, that's racist, no, that's bad, that's racist, that's racist. Like, and and they haven't really figured out context yet. Um, I don't think that the shows on this channel should sound the same. I agree. You know, I think that that's a problem that talk channels generally have, that shows either agree with each other or sound the same yeah. or whatever. I think that that's... I love the fact that this channel now has multiple live shows. Mm. Not because it's like, yeah, this is my channel, but because I get to worry about 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., and then I don't think about anything else on the channel. I would like a more replays. I don't, I'd I be very happy if everyone got fired. It was just us. You'd be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm greedy. <laughs> yeah. I don't, need, I don't need at this point the responsibility of, That's true. of worrying about a channel. I would like to worry about three hours of content a day and move on with my life. Well, that's why we have an operations manager. You don't have to worry about that kind don't, of stuff. You, you, oh, this is the second day in a row what? that you are you, and that, that cocksucking grin on your face. <laughs> what? Trying to throw somebody under Every the time bus. he has a grin on his face, it's not, that's kind of <laughs> 
<laughs> he loves he loves trying to worm a nickel joke into a conversation. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. He loves, that we're, we're not even talking about that. He loves trying to trying to figure out how he can how um, he can kick Iraq in the ribs. Well, I'm, a, I'm not kicking Eric. I'm Good saying, luck. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that? It wasn't me? And by the way, you know that's what? what he does too. He, he throws it into the room and he goes, "I don't know why they went there." I'm just reminding you that there's no reason for you to think about other <laughs> other things on the channel because we have someone. To I was do wondering. I was wondering why Travis would make that statement. That makes perfect sense. Well, there's an operations manager. Travis <laughs> thought that the, the natural uh, follow-up to that would be a conversation about the incompetence of said yeah. person, but no. I'm not going to no. talk about that. And I, I wouldn't have anything to add to that. Do you know how Colbert just got in trouble for the cock holster line? Like, that's the type Hashtag of stuff. Colbert? That's the type of shit that drives you crazy. Yes. Like, where, oh my God, that's anti-gay. And then you're like, where does it end? This mania, this upset. That's where it feels like it's being put in your face and shoved in your face. Not because, oh, they're showing gay couples now, or they're showing trans people. There's, I don't think Nick cares about that. I don't think most people care about that. It's, it's when it gets to a point where the PC culture wants to do things like every time there's an allusion to something, they try to lump it into that story and make you seem like you're homophobic if you don't agree. Like to call Colbert homophobic Crazy. over that stupid line, that's the type of shit where it goes, it just goes off the rails. And then the main issue, which is an important issue, gets fucking sidetracked and people start to hate it. And that yeah. to me is where, where a, lot of, a lot of what happens. And I don't agree with everything Nick DiPaolo says, but like he's one of my favorite. He can't. I don't either. <laughs> I haven't agreed with 100% of Nick for 20 years. But, you agree with some and some you don't. But he's one of my favorite people to have on our show. I fucking love when Nick Apollo's on our show, and I couldn't be happier that he's a show on this channel. It makes me like when I when I tell people who's on this channel, his name being there makes me be like, yeah, that's fucking cool. Nick, Nick, and, and even Nick's jokes that are just nice jokes, he's harsh. Yeah. He's a fucking a fifty year old white dude from Boston who probably got punched in the mouth on Christmas morning. <laughs> Nick is a rough <laughs> communicator, <laughs> but he's the, the like the, the, they were playing one of his jokes recently. Which I forget what he was talking about, but the difference between the the, the wife and the husband and who gets more. And he's like, yeah, my wife's uh, walking around with a ten thousand uh, dollar you know diamond on her finger, and I'm walking around with a urinal ring. It's just this <laughs> harsh, brutal way of painting things, and it's always funny. Uh, he's just a funny fucking guy who communicates that way. So you're not always going to like him or agree with him, but that's who he is. And uh, you, do you know what I mean? Like I get Jason's a little sensitive to it, but I don't think you should be that upset that a guy like that is on the channel. If you don't agree with him, talk about him. But him being here is, is good. I, I think it's great to have the variety of, uh, and, I, and I love that Nick's here. Yeah, and since when are we supposed to have stuff on the channel that's not disagreeable? Sure. So this, so this is the one place where people are supposed to be able to disagree with shows. Do we? Uh, do you want to hear a little bit of Jason's? Uh, uh, Ran on Nick? Yeah, because when I heard it, I expected it to be really awful. And then I heard it, I was like, I see he's just being more sensitive to this. My guess is just because it's a newer thing for him to be discussing and identifying with. And you, and you kind of find in the way you're going to handle it. I love Jason. He was... Ew. <laughs> ew. Ew, Sam. Ew, you Not like what? that. Not like that. Not, like that. Not like, like that. As a friend or more than a friend? Just as a friend. Not like like-like. Oh, you just like him? Just, I just like him, but like not him. like, like, like him. Okay. But uh, I thought he was way oversensitive on this one. I, I did too, but I, I understand. Like, when I'm listening and, and to it. I'm like, I, why does he feel this way? Because he never seemed like a sense artist. He never seemed like a sensitive dude language-wise. Like, he never seemed to give a fuck before. So it's like, why is this all of a sudden something? And I'm just guessing because it's become real personal, and you don't always handle that. You know what I mean? Like, you, you might be, why am I not as sensitive to it? I don't give a shit what Nick says about trans people. Like, I might not agree with it, mm -hmm. but I, it doesn't offend me or bother me. But it's also like the idea of saying he shouldn't be on the channel is like... I disagree with that, totally. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? I uh, enjoy watching Nick on stage. He's one of my favorite comedians. He literally is one of the fucking... You know, sometimes if you get a guy who just who, who puts things forth that you don't agree with, that you don't like, it's still important to hear that guy. And you can't watch Nick DiPaolo as a comedian and not think he's brilliant. You can't. Yeah. You know who he's good friends with? Janine Garofalo. Because Janine and Nick were on that HBO special together many, many, many years ago. The first time I saw Nick, I think it was before I did stand-up, and me and my buddy Kenny Hines are watching this special, and Janine was very funny on it, and Nick was this fucking, he was a beast. He was a young, good-looking, angry fucking beast. And I never forgot the first time I saw Nick DiPaolo. But I've, I've interacted with him and Janine Garofalo together, and they really like each other. They were friendly. And they're, you cannot be more in, pol polar opposites Absolutely. than Janine Garofalo and Nick DiPaolo. And when you watch the way female comedians or gay comedians interact with Nick, they all respect him. Yeah. Some of them might not like some of his views or things he says, but just in that world and on that level, man, you, you can't have anything but respect for him. And you know what, Nick? Even if he's not right about certain things or he's not PC, he's, he's brutally honest, and he's spitting out a point of view that is held by a lot of people, and there's no lying behind it. You're hearing a guy give his real opinion about things, and, that, and that's a guy you can have a conversation with because even if he walks away and goes, no, I don't agree, you'd be like, all right, 
at least he heard me out and I heard him out and he don't agree. Yeah, the constructive thing to do is to like have if you really if Nick's on the channel and you really disagree with him, have him on your show. And yeah. be like, dude, like, why would you say this? Yeah. Like, don't you know what this is? Because he is funny. He's a really funny but, fucking and, guy. But he'll have the argument with you. Oh, yes, he and will. And he'll listen. I mean, he'll listen and then and he won't go on your side, but he'll listen to what you're saying. 70% of Nick's things, and having had a million discussions with him, come from blowback in show business or for, for language policing. And sometimes when you, again, when, when you deal with all that shit and you fire back, sometimes you do fire a little too angrily because you're, you're reacting to shit that you're being told not to joke about. And you realize, like... Uh, all right, I'm kind of hitting the people who are dealing with this, and my real anger is people telling me not to joke about it. Do you, right. you understand? The, yes. So, so let's hear what. Yeah, uh, I'm babbling. I apologize. Let's hear what Jason Allen said. Go on now. All right, this first clip is a little long, so if you want. How to, long is it? It's a minute fifty seconds. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Travis. <laughs> trying to do my job. Travis. No! <laughs> oof, 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 oof. Oof. Oh, good. Oof. Troy, you haven't come up with your own bark. Troy, I'm I'm so proud of Troy. All right, Troy, come up with a bark. No, Travis, no, no. dumb. I feel like, I feel like if I jump on now, I'm like, no, 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 no. no. We need you, you to jump have a bark. on. We need you have a bark. Okay, right. I'll do it again. Well, get, let me let me let me give you some time to think. Yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, give no, no, him a little time. No. By the next time we do it, you should have one. Okay, all right. Give right. him a second. That's fair. All right, all give right. him a second over there. Google barks. <laughs> That'll take a while. B a r x. Just I looking up tree photos. Serious or not, if he's joking or he's actually offended, but he died. No, he looks at me different for the rest of my life. He'll never forget me now. I'll be like, oh, that's the fucking, that's the gay guy, and that makes me want to come back into my into my shell but you know then i listen to this radio show uh in the afternoon on this fucking channel man of a guy that is just bashing gays lesbians and transgender people for like two fucking hours i tried to call his show but i couldn't get through i mean, actually got through but then they like hung up on me um on this channel too <laughs> Talking about how there's there's barely any of them anyway, and it's always in my face, and and, and we're never, not, now we're not allowed to say faggot. And I'm like, man. Uh, and then he just got all these people to call in and agree with him, and I'm listening, and I'm thinking to myself, if I'm not me, if I'm, but I am a bisexual guy or a gay guy or a bisexual girl or a transgender, and I'm listening to this, and then he has all these phone calls of people agreeing with him. Yeah, man, there probably is. What is it? Is it 10% or 5%? It's not even 10%, is it? That are transgender, gay, and bi or whatever? It's fuck all of us. But it still adds up to being millions of people. I don't understand why. What about if, what if there was only 5% black people? You know, like, and then there was a fucking a radio show where it was just two hours on why are they going to put, why are they going to bring black people into my face? You know, because it's not, it's not a, cho it's not a choice, man. I didn't make this choice. It's just what I am. It really, my, the only See, choice I made was saying, I, I don't think it's JC. I, I don't think it's Nick. That's the choice I made. It was just. Oh, sorry. Right. I, I don't think it's Nick saying that. Like even when Nick, like I really do think it's a reaction to being told that getting mad and saying faggot in a moment of anger is this life-threatening thing, or, or when it wasn't when he was younger. And again, I know times change, and you got to kind of adjust to that and, and kind of reset a little bit. But I don't think Nick is reacting to, oh my God, that guy's gay. Fuck him. I don't think it's that. To be honest, and again, I've not, he's been around a lot of gays in show business, and you, you can't, um, you know, I don't think he feels that way. Jason sounds so hurt, though. I wish Jason, I do wish Jason could just, I, I think that's what do. it is. Yeah, I think he's, he's hurt by it, and it's like, I, just blow dudes in peace, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I feel like people should be able to do whatever they want, and you don't even need to label it. Like, you don't even need to just announce, like, well, because, you know, I've sucked some dicks, that means I'm bi, and if you're talking about this, and you're talking about me, and, and it's like, maybe you're just sucking a dick today. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I like the casual attitude. Well, that doesn't mean I'm going to. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> but, the, but the idea is, though, but again, when, you, when, it's, new, when it's new to you, yeah. when discussing it is new to you, mm -hmm. That's where it comes in. Like, it, you know what I mean? It, you get sensitive to things when, when they're newer to you. Um, and it's just, you know, you, he's never been able to discuss this stuff, ever. He's never been able to talk yeah, about this true. stuff. He's had, you know, the guy was abused by his father. I give, I give Jason a certain amount, you know, to, to say that, oh, else is a fucking pussy. It's like, nah, it's not about him being a pussy. The guy, you know, he's a fucking animal. He's, his whole thing has been about uh, fucking destroying himself physically. I mean, if he's, when he's not sparring, Rogan told him he spars too hard. He gets kicked in the face all the time. He had Shane Carwin knock him unconscious. This is a guy with certain feelings about himself that he's working through. He should probably just chill the fuck out. Yeah, so he's not handling it all maybe 100% the way he should handle it. But also, the way, like, him talking about Nick like that, that's the same thing, in a way, that is having him stand there and tell Shane Carwin, punch me in the face. It's both sides of that same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I work through who I am and the way I feel about myself? So maybe you're a little sensitive sometimes. Maybe you're a little too self-hating sometimes. 
you know, I'm just saying that you're not going to do it perfectly. But Jason, you got to relax when it comes to Nick, I think, because I, you, I think you're reading the guy wrong. And you should just have the discussion with him on the air. It'd be very entertaining. And Jason said he did it'd try be, to call in. So. It'd be really entertaining. Also, I mean, if, if he tried to call in and couldn't get through it, that probably leads to the point that it's good that he's on the channel because... He said they hung up on him. I mean, but I'm sorry, who the fuck would hang up on him if I he said, know. I'm Jason, I'm on the channel? Why, um, why wouldn't you put him through? But it's also like if you disagree with Nick, which a lot of people do, or you don't want to hear Nick, which I'm sure there are plenty yeah. of people that are like, this is fucking bullshit, I'm not, I wouldn't listen to this show, then you should be able to just say, this old man is out of touch, <clears throat> you know, this, I, this, this, you can't make jokes like this anymore, he's totally out of touch, turn the channel, and just move on to the next thing, not be like... You know, I don't think he should be on the air at all. Shane, now, yes. And Shane, why do you think there's Shane in Indiana? Um, well, there's a little bit of a backstory about why Jason's all hurt. But um, the backstory is he literally had a uh, USC cow- cowboy thrown on. Right. What happened and, with that? Oh, you guys know about that. No, no, but I don't know what happened. He mentioned cowboy, but I don't know what happened. He basically came out, you know, dropped. Jason came out and said that he was, you know, he sometimes sucks a dick or something. And Cowboy was really taken back by it and kind of stand offish after that. And then he literally turned on the radio and heard Nick Apollo. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like a bad day for gays in Jason's life because he had that back to back. But the opinion is, is just like Jason being gay, mad at a straight guy talking about gays like that. I mean, the straight guys are kind of sick and tired of talking about well, you also you also got to realize too, and this is what Jason has to realize. Like, I don't know Cowboy well. I've interviewed him. I could see Cowboy so only being standoffish with that. But again, I understand that that would be annoying. But you have to realize when people when you put that out there and you say that people are not always going to like it or react positively. And some guys have a different experience in their lives. Man, they've been raised a certain way. Yeah. And, and just because some guys like, whoa, what? Like, yeah, you're dealing with a guy that fucking throws kicks for a living. Cowboy has a way of looking at things. Maybe it's a little old. All right, whatever. But that's who he is. There so you are, can't get mad if he's not 100% on board. If Cowboy looks at you and he goes, you faggot, and walks off the radio, that's different. But if he's a little standoffish and he doesn't know how to handle it, hey, man, a lot of people don't. It's a, it, Again, in our lifetimes, it's, it's a, it seems long, but relative to the American experience or the human experience, we've been talking about this stuff openly for a very short period of time. Right, and it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's actively in the process of changing. I'm getting worked out, right. But, Jim, you know. Thank you, Shane. There are... Yeah. There are Jim Norton fans that have to believe that the trans stuff is jokes. For a while. That I, they will not live in the reality that you're actually talking from personal experience. I, I don't know. At this point, I don't think so. I mean, the fans, you know, as much as we've teased them, the fans are not dopes. Mm-hmm. They, they, get, they always understood subtext. Or usually, they, sometimes I think they think that we're more horrible people than we really are. Yeah. But the fans understood a lot of the subtext. They understood a lot of the shit that was happening on the radio show for years that never once said... So I did joke about it at first. That was the easy way to talk about it. And again, my job is to be funny. My job is not to come out and tell you people how to feel. So when it comes to that stuff, you know, you joke about it and it's like, does he know? Does he know? But people always kind of knew. And at one point I denied. Like, I'm like, no, I didn't know. I knew. I knew. Yeah. But I think people kind of understood that. And I always, I always felt that people did. Because even the way they would joke with me, they, they didn't give a fuck. And I knew that they didn't give a fuck. I wouldn't have cared if they did, but I sensed that they didn't. And you're joking about it. I think actually like eased people into this thing. That if it wasn't you or you weren't joking about it, they might have been uncomfortable with it. But the fact that, like, they're little Jimmy, I love little Jimmy, is doing this, and he, like, you know, and, and you eased it in by joking about it, made them be like, oh, I guess people people do that. That's fine. And, 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 when, when, and when people joke with me about it, and mm-hmm. I've, I've had, you know how many times I've had that? We're like, hey, was she a tranny or whatever? Like, I know they're not trying to be like, fuck trans people. They're just trying to joke about this thing that you've discussed. Right. And in a way, joking about something in a way kind of normalizes it. We were literally joking about it with Ricky in the dressing room the other night. Yeah. And it wasn't like, guys, that's my lifestyle. Yeah. Like, I, don't, are you guys are you guys making fun of the way I live my life? Yeah, you got to own who you are and, and understand that like in, the, in this world where people make fun of each other harshly, mm-hmm. you're going to have harsh jokes about it uh, back and forth. So fans for years have been teasing me about it on Twitter or a lady with a dick or is she going to, hey, she's a pretty girl, Jim, did she fuck you in the mouth or ass? What am I going to do, get mad at that? No, it's funny. It's funny. I don't mind that and it's a fair question. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know? And you know what? Half of it is jokes. I'll have an answer for you. Half of it is jokes, <laughs> but the other half is like we're cured because I joke about it all the time and the real reasons is because like I'm curious. Like I joke about it because I want to know the real answer. You know what I mean? Like sure. I want to I find out. Sure. I'm interested. But uh, you can't, as someone who's kind of talked about that stuff for a long time and whatever, you, you can't let the, the fact that everyone's not going to react in a comfortable way uh, affect you or upset you. You can't. You can't survive in this world if you're going to allow that. And, but again, for him it's newer. So you got to give Jason a little bit of a break too. It, like, you know, I don't agree with what he said about Nick at all. 
But you, you know, all right, he's, he's new to it. He's, hopefully he'll come through this thing on the other side and not really give a shit. I want to get Jason to New York and have Nick and Jason on at the same time. I want that conversation to happen on our show. I would love It'd that conversation. Great. And they'd both be willing to have it. Uh, believe me, I've never seen Nick shy away from a discussion. Mm-hmm. And I, I, th- I don't think Jason is uh, particularly afraid of co- confrontation. <laughs> That's one thing you can't say about Jason. He's not a pussy. Like, no. Anyone who's saying Jason's a pussy, you're, you're, you're just using, like, you're just pulling words out of the fucking air and using them. Like, he's not a pussy. No. He's not a fucking little si- I mean, the, the guy does nothing but try to destroy himself. Uh, and, he, and, that, and that does say something. He spent a fucking lifetime skateboarding, going through concussions, doing all these things that self-injure. And then he comes out and he says his fucking father would rape it. All right, there's something there that might make you react a certain way. Right. So you, you, know, you got to give that guy a break too, man. Because he's, he, he's a little sensitive to it because he can't bite the face of the guy that fucked him up. You want to... Uh... Take a break. I do. Get, Mary uh, Jean has arrived, and we have this rapper, Cool Keith, coming in. The return of Mary Jean. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. I'm and sure she is too. Cool Keith is a legend, and he is obsessed with Mary Jean. Good. He kept hitting on her. He did the night show once, and he wouldn't stop hitting on Mary Jean. And Nick was talking about the word in sports. Yes, Stephen Baltimore, you're right. Um, but maybe we can get Nick. Oh, we could have got Nick on the phone. We should have. But he'll talk. But Nick's got a show. Yeah, I'll talk about. Listen it. to Jason today, mm-hmm. um, and then listen to Nick DiPaolo at six. Yeah, I would say listen to Jason, listen to Nick, and then see if there's commentary. I imagine Nick didn't get into it last night because he again, mentioned it briefly. Oh, he did. All yeah, right, yeah. yeah. We're not trying to make a whole thing about it, but it's happening on the channel. All right, we'll be right back. I and, love uh, drama. I, I like the drama too, but you know, people are talking about it. So what are we gonna do? Just keep jerking each other off, you and me? Yes. I got into it with the Italian ladies. Yeah. Huh? No, not like that. Ew. I got into it with the Italian ladies who live in my building yesterday because they were talking about the wallpaper problems. I, I mean, to, to have channel drama and then to walk out of the That's apartment and have building drama, I was like, oh, this is great. I went right home and told Jess all about it. I'll tell you about it when we get back. Hope you die. We gleefully return to the radio. We should get our first guest in. It's been a while since yeah, we've has. had her on. Everybody watch your jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everybody got your padded boxing helmets on, your sparring helmets. Uh-oh, there she is. Look, you look great, Mary Jean. Doesn't she look lovely? Oh, she looks incredible. You. I didn't get to hug you outside. Hello, Hi. Mary. Hi, Sam. How are you? Oh, we'll hug. Oh, you want to hug? Okay. She's wearing a very, uh, like, a, like a, a short dress with the with the sides all cut out and laced up. You can see side boobs. She looks very lovely. You look great. Your hair is all done up. Yeah. You look fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Yeah? Yeah, should I talk in the mic? Yeah. That'd be great. You're right? on the yeah. Hi. Yeah, how are Hi. you? I think I'm good. Yeah, you think? Yeah. How come you don't know? <laughs> um, It's like 10 a.m. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on yet. 10 a.m. is not What early. time did you wake up? <laughs> like 6.30. Oh, to get ready and... Yeah, and I was like smoking around. <laughs> smoking around? You mean you're doing drugs? <laughs> no. 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 I was doing natural stuff. Weed? Yeah. Good. Good for you. Do you feel a little high? Not yet. No. No. Okay. We, we haven't had you in in a while, though. Did you, you miss coming in? Yeah, like, I thought you guys were all mad at me. I can and... never be mad at you. Do you feel high being around us? Yeah, like, super high. Right? In a good way. Exactly. Exactly. So how's your life been? It's been good. I know you've been on some friendship dates with Jim Norton. Oh, my God. I love Jim. Thank yeah? You. Jim, like, I'm a little stalker towards you because we have no. such a good time. We have fun. We hang out. It's not, yeah. uh, it's just, you know, we just, when we have time, we, we meet and hang out, and it's pretty, uh, it's normal. You watched uh, the the dog dying movie? Oh yeah, we my did. god, I cried. She bawled through the whole thing. <laughs> well, of course. That's why I wouldn't see, because I can't watch movies where dogs die. So when that trailer came out of the, uh, what's it called? A Dog's Purpose. A Dog's Purpose? Yeah. And they showed, like, like in the trailer, they were like, this dog gets reincarnated 15 times throughout the movie. And I'm like, I'm not going to see a movie where a dog dies 15 times. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about the dog actually dying. Right. I missed that out. But, but it actually makes you feel better. Because then you realize, like, oh, that you, we're interacting with these dogs over and over again. So your yeah, dog never really dies. not. It's made up. No, I know that. But I mean, that's, that's <laughs> you what think? people think. Yeah, no, I think some guy just wrote that. I don't know. It makes sense. Yeah. You, you know what happens when dogs die? They're in the ground, or they get burned up in an urn, like they're oh, dead. It's over. That's so sad. I know, right? I thought they go to heaven. No, they're, it, they're no. There's no dog heaven. It, they just go. They just die. Which one got you the most? The first one, the first dog that died. I don't know how many were they. It was like 15. After a while, it's like a ride already. Just kill this fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It I was just waiting you. for. I'm like, oh no, it's gonna happen again. Yeah. Oh, it's so sad. Isn't that the movie where they were drowning dogs on the set? Yeah. Yeah, but then they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. the Peter thing. Peter no, just did that. It wasn't true. No, uh, no, they they it seemed. Like they said that there was worse intentions than there were. Apparently, the dog was in good spirits. Were you wearing an entire package of bracelets? Like I just hear them. There, this is how all many I are hear. there? I don't know. I left. I left some behind. One for every too. dog that dies in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're so funny, Sam. Oh, I miss you. <laughs> thank you very much, Mary. We also watched a, a, a documentary. Uh, which documentary was it? On pedophilia. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Did you like that one? Um. So you guys, because Mary loves. Uh, 
uh, dogs, animals. Sure. You love small children. No, so it's that's like it's no, both no, your whoa, 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 no, 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 no. I love pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. No, no that Generate. pedophile movie was so good. It was it good? Yeah, Why we was learned it, so much. What did you learn? Um, you didn't think there'd be a follow-up question, did you? No, it's just like I can't say what I could say, but I don't even remember say? it. I remember us watching it, but I don't remember what they even talked about or anything. Like you saw some guys getting aroused just talking about the subject. So I'm like, now I know if if I hear a guy talking about this and he gets excited, it's a sign. Right. So like if you see a guy getting excited talking about kids, you're like, wait, now, now I, know I know he's a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> he's a creepy pedo. Right. <laughs> right. Whereas before, if you saw a guy talking and sexually getting excited as he was talking about kids, he'd be like, what's his deal? Oh, my God. He must love kids. Yeah. Right. He must be a good guy. <laughs> right. <I see. laughs> he must love just bouncing them on his lap. I should hire him as a babysitter. Oh, these signs. <laughs> right. Right. The things that you would get wrong. So, yeah, we've watched a couple of odd things together. Wow. We'll, we'll do it again, too. We'll watch something else. You yeah. know what you should watch? She's a fun movie partner. You know what you should watch? There's an HBO documentary <laughs> That's new called Mommy Dead and Dearest. Someone else recommended that to me. Is it about um, Joan Crawford? No, it's not about Mommy Dearest. Okay. Did you, did you finish Feud, by the way? No, I, I'm, um, I, I think I'm like four or five in. How many are there? Eight? Eight. The I last get... two episodes are fucking incredible. I watched them over the weekend. The whole thing is pretty good. And let me tell you something about uh, uh, Jessica Lange. Who's that? She's the she's the actress who plays Joan Crawford in the in the in the series Feud. She's also been in American uh, Horror Story. She was she in was, King Kong. Yes, she was in King Kong. She was in uh, 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 Cape Fear. Uh, great actress, but she is unbelievable. In Susan the last Sarandon is great as Betty Davis episodes. too. We sound like two fucking old hands I know, talking about this. I'm still watching Sex in the City, like season two. Haven't gotten through that one yet. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> I love. It. I keep watching. Are it you over like a Samantha? Over. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little Carrie. Right. I'm a little of. Charlotte, like a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah. So, like, mommy dead and dearest is about a. a, a it's a documentary about a, a mom. She gets murdered, you know, stabbed to death, oh. and uh, the daughter. They did. They, they the daughter did it. But uh, are you blowing the spoiler or no? No, I think you find out early in the movie that that happened. Plus, it's like a news story. Go on right, now. Right. It's it's a news story. But it's you. It's like snap. That yeah. show on We Channel. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's, it's about so, people who snap. Like most, most of the episodes are their daughters killing the mother. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like snap. I love that. Except in this one, the real what the documentary is really about is that she was a victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. You know, oh. where the mom like you know, like in six. Where they hurt their kids. Yeah, where they yeah. pretend they're sick and all that <gasps> Wait, stuff. Wait, that's what Eminem had. You know the lyric. Yeah. Yes. Cleaning out my closet. That's right. Did that's he say Munchausen? Made? Yeah. Oh, I never knew. I always wonder. Did he say going, his mother had it or no? He's, no. Yeah, well, he says going through public housing <laughs> systems, victim of Munchausen syndrome. Yeah. Okay, saying his mother probably would injure him just for attention. Or no, not necessarily injure him, but pretend they're sick. Like convince they convince their kids that they're sick. They don't always like hurt them, but they like. I've never. That's what I think. Oh, the I thought majority Munchausen. Of, yeah. It's about getting sympathy right. for your it's, kids when they're sick, right? Yeah, it's about no. It's about convincing the kid that they're sick, like but, convincing them they have cancer or convincing them that they have this like immune system disorder. But isn't that for parental sympathy? Isn't that so the mother gets sympathy? Oh, for sure. People? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but that's what the that's what the movie. Hey, really that's about. my word. Munchausen. Right. When you eat a house, <laughs> you heard what I'm saying? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh huh. <laughs> Do you like chip? I love chip. I get it. Oh my god, I love chip. I'm still done with you on the chip. Sure. Oh you yeah, are, you she, she's gonna be on the chip. She's going to be on the chip. Do you like Chip because he's clever? Like, because you get some of because this? he's super horny, like I am. <laughs> so it's like he has stuff in common. Yeah, Chip enjoys Mary Jean very much. Does Chip get horned up when Mary Jean? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, what about Mary Jean? Does Chip like <laughs> fucking bubs My hanging ass. out? <laughs> bubs. <laughs> oh, he's back. <laughs> That's not that sexy. <laughs> has Mary charmed the chipper? Yeah, she has. Oh, she huh? fucking charmed my peck out of stand up, right, Travis? Oh, God, it's the damn. worst line <laughs> that I can't get out of my head. What? You've charmed the chipper. Oh. <laughs> That's your dick? What? The chipper? My no. pecka. No. Your pecka? What yeah. The, the, the chipper chip is the person. Yeah, the chipper is a character that Jim yeah. sometimes falls into. He like that movie, uh, uh, Split? Split. I have not seen it. It's oh. great. Do you know who can't stand chip? Matt Sarah. I would, I would it, believe it, that. It creeps him out the way a fucking monkey creeps out a dog. Mm -hmm. Like, he just can't be around it. I get he won't, that. He, I asked him in my podcast, he won't do it. So, uh, Mary Jean, last time you were on the show, you kicked the shit out of a porn star. Is Aww. that right? <laughs> Memories. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Well, uh, and an employee. Uh, and an employee? And an employee. And some bouncers. Adrian. Oh, and yeah, that's right. You uh, started throwing, uh, you, you punched him in the face, if I remember correctly. Well, well yeah. But I like the, I like that. <laughs> that's it's funny. But, um, yeah, and, and the security, I'll tell you, I talked to them in the lobby. I'm they, sorry, I still really feel really bad that I They still talk about this. you. They're they like, do. I don't, but, <laughs> they really didn't see it coming. They were in my way, too, but yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I kicked the shit out of you guys. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't aware what was going on. You had a, uh, you had uh, uh, blinding rage? <laughs> or just a lot of weed? 
No, I didn't even smoke. I didn't even have a drink. I so was, was drinking Sprite. Um, I just got really annoyed that what she was doing. So what was she doing? If we could say a piece for her, because we we've been confused. See what happened was we were talking about our live show. We were at the Village Underground, and we had Mary Jean on doing the Mary Jean thing. But then we had another porno star on, and the reason she was don't on, call her that. Which we porn actress? Her? She's like a, like I said before, she's chlamydia. Like a thought? No, worse. Whoa. We had someone on who was worse than a thought, right? And so, but the reason we had her on because we weren't going to ask you to make out with Bobo. We value you too much for that. Yeah, like, we didn't want to ask you to kiss. I've seen his penis already. Right. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to. Mary Jean's not like a stunt woman. She's our friend. I, t- no. I told Mary Jean that too. We saw you as kind of somebody who said funny shit and asked funny questions. Right. So thank you. So we had to find some. Some chick, some rando, some dirt, some dirt to kiss Bobo. I liked her, by the way, but she's some dirt, some she's dirt, Sam. some dirt. You're right, you're right. She's a nice girl. You don't some like dirt. dirt. No, I don't like dirt. But uh, uh, what ended up happening was she did a little bit. I don't know. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but she muscled her way into Mary Jean's segment a little bit, and I believe that that bothered you. Um, and then she started taking off her top and Mary Jean, and they would become this like thing. They were both trying to get attention, and I get it. But <laughs> at the end of the show, I thought it was all said and done. It was over. And at the end of the show. I was wrapping it up and saying goodbye, thank you, everybody, blah, blah, blah. And somebody in the audience uh, goes, hey, oh, there's your nipple. Goes, uh, hey, Sam, the girls are fighting. And I go, what? And it's as the show's ending, and I realize in the back of the room there's a fist fight going on between you, Mary Jean, and the other uh, young lady, uh, Dirt, as you called her, who was there. Uh, so so how, did the, how did the fight start? What, yeah, what was the moment before it? Um, Jim and Sam. Mm-hmm. I didn't care that she wanted to be on the air and hold the mic as much as she could. Mm-hmm. I could give two shits. Mm-hmm. Um, she just kept instigating little shit. She's like, you're not the only one that you can do radio. She kept looking oh. at me and going like, like, what are you going to do? And then she touches Adrian's shoulder. I'm like, what does, what does that mean? Adrian's a free like dick. He can fuck whoever he wants Plus, to. Plus, you'd already had your hands yeah. up his ass at that point. It's like, been there, been done, there that. done that. Were you in love with him? Adrian? Yeah. Of course. I love Adrian. <laughs> but you're in love with all of us, right? I am. Um, <laughs> okay, so. I want all of your Stevens in my pussy one day. Okay. I have nine months. Sam will spit them in there. So you can have to suck everybody off and, and spit it inside you. Oh, That's, I got that. I got yeah. the horny. I had to be like. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't do the same thing for me. But, um, <laughs> but so, okay, so she's making like little passive aggressive remarks towards yeah, you. Yeah. Like and you're the, not the only one who can do radio and right. looking at you like, like you ate shit. Talk to the hand, bitch. That's what you said? Pretty much. Well, I'm just, like, talk to the knuckles, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, t- t- talk to the hand. It's in your mouth. Yeah, talk to the hand. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe she thought I wasn't going to do anything, but that little last <laughs> link thing that she did, I don't know. She just... Crossed the line. I, and I forgot where I was for a second. So you started swinging. You got blind rage. You got that uh, that uh, 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 the, the anger that's inside of you. <laughs> spilling out of you. Well, we talked and about, I didn't mean to. Yeah, because it's one of those things, we talked about this after too, like it, it's one of those things where you have one of those crazy moments yeah. where it's just a stupid moment but then something really bad happens because of it and it was like, ah, it was so avoidable. Yeah. But you know, nothing Definitely bad Definitely not happen. worth it either. Yeah. You started throwing elbows at the security uh, guards? Well, <laughs> I just didn't like they were holding me back. And then yeah. again, I'm sorry. But the, the in hindsight, that is their job. Yeah. like we can't have like protecting girls. her like I you. have boobs and stuff. Yes, like you do. But you were you also, can't. I mean, but you were fighting. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't. I was defending myself from the situation. Didn't you start the situation? Well. Physically? Yeah, you just started. She started with her eyes. And right. Like, so, like, you, you were know? defending yourself against dirty looks with punches. Yeah, because she was I get a that. dirt. Okay. I get that, because she's dirt. And, um, and you didn't like that she touched Adrian. You didn't go for that. No, she could have touched him, but it was what she did. She was like. She was almost touching you know. him to spite Mary Jean. Oh, like, okay. fuck you, Mary Jean. Look, I'm yeah. touching Adrian. Go fuck yourself. And you're like, yeah. oh, really, bitch? <laughs> I get it. And then you punched Something him. Something like that. Then yeah, you and then, well, yeah then, you, then you punched Adrian in the face. Correct? Well, he came and he was asking me all these questions. And he was like, why, Mary, why? <laughs> 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 and um, I remember he sent you a note about her or something yeah, like that. Yeah, there was something, yeah. So he was in the mix. Right, you were he like... He was there at the wrong time. Right, and he was instigating a little bit. He was an instigator. But yeah. that's his job again, so I can't right. even be mad at him. No. That's why we'll forever love him. Now that's he's right. in the woods. Yeah. Writing. He's so much in the middle of it. Oh my God, yeah, Montana. Yeah. He's he left like, He left the show. He's not here anymore. He's gone. Is he like Amish now? I think he might be. He, that, right? that is where the Amish people normally go, Wyoming. Yeah, yeah, I think. So it's possible. I, think I watch he, he may be Amish. Like you watch Amish stuff? Yeah. What kind of stuff? Big love. Isn't that Wasn't that Mormons? Mormons? Or Mormons? They're, they look Amish with their outfits. 
<laughs> I believe, yeah, Big Love is about uh, polygamy, right? Yeah, my favorite stuff. Right. But what was had... the Amish one where they would go on the Rumstella or whatever it is? Yeah. What was that one? Rumspringa. Oh, Rumspringa, yeah. Um, what was what was their... Uh... I don't know, but I remember the show. Yeah, where they, would, they had like a couple of Amish guys. Was it, was it fake, though, all that shit? Like that they were doing the Amish drug dealer and... I don't remember. But, uh, all tweets. No, yeah, we get tweets all the time. Uh, I'm not drunk. No, don't worry about all those tweets. All those I th- only drink champagne. Like, that's right. Classic. She does drink champagne. Yeah, she I love a, champagne. Did she, she have some champagne at your place? She did, yes. That's so nice. Yes. What did you have? I had a water. Oh. And then when she left, I encouraged her not to drink a lot of champagne, and I don't keep it in the house. Right. So there's no way to just put it back. And so then I, just, I tried to suck it like if it was a deck near the sink area. Did you? Yeah. I was holding it in front of my pants just to, <laughs> But I just dumped it out when it was done. I'm like, I don't keep it. Right, right. Makes sense. I but was like, uh, like it was calm. You did? Yeah. You yeah. drank it down like cum. Yeah, yeah. So then, of course, I had to have her spit it in my face. <laughs> Partially, I'm pop locking. <laughs> but yeah, I just like, yeah, you can't. What are you going to do? I'm not going to keep this stuff. Right. Champagne. Right. You can't put the fucking cork back in it. No. He no. goes flat, right? I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, so, no. so then you have to get more champagne the next time Mary comes over. Yeah, Mary brought champagne last time she came. Oh, okay. So that's not bad. We had Mexican mm. food. What kind of Mexican food? I don't know. I had steak and uh, whatever. Steak? And then she had like these t- empanadas. <laughs> I don't know. That's Dominican. Oh, is it? Yeah, empanada. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it was fun though. I need a table situation. We're both sitting on the sofa with trays. Yeah. On my fucking ottomans. Just you look so sexy eating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the way you were like. Hmm. Yeah, I'm very tasty. Because he uses his mouth. Oh my god, I think that's why. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any mouth movement, I'm like dick or licking pussy. Yeah. Right. Like, that's all I. Can yeah. She saw about. me with a taco. Right. She might want her over. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a burrito. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bigger the better. That's right. That's right. How's your love life been? Um, it's it's going. It's sad. Why sad? Okay, is it going or is it sad? It's both. Okay, why sad if yeah. it's going? I don't know. Like, I'm looking for steady dick, and that's a little hard because I just want to, like, fuck, fuck, fuck every time. Right, so the guys that are giving you the steady dick are like, you got to stop fucking everybody, and you're like, but I like that. Or do you get attached to them when they just want the sex? Um, no, I get attached after I have the sex you know, how can you get attached to Adrian? Because it didn't. I mean, like you, she did a little bit, though. A little, but not really. No, I mean not enough. She struck him because she was offended. <laughs> yeah, but I, mean, I would have struck him before. Oh, you would have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how can you get attached to him? Um. When he dropped in that Cuban D. <laughs> you know. Maybe because I knew I didn't have a future with him. Right. He's just not. You know, there's other guys where. I fucked him, and I'm like, oh, wow, I, I might see this guy as a baby daddy, or, you know, right. I'm going to marry this guy in the future. You Adrian see- was like, oh, just, we're just going to fuck. Right, just young, dumb, and full of cum. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. So you weren't attached to him. Yeah. But these other guys, sometimes you start having baby daddy fantasies. Yeah. Because you like, want to oh get knocked God. up. Oh, hell yeah. Right, yeah. right. And so you're like, mm. you may be the guy to knock me up. Yeah, that's are the guy I'm going to trick. No. That's hot. <laughs> do you tell people <laughs> tell you are? Tell me about it. Do you, do you trick people? Do you tell people you're on the pill sometimes? No, I usually wear condoms, so. Yeah? Yeah. I still haven't found the guy that I'm going to be like, oh my God, honey, let's not do it like that. Let's go natural. Yeah. Would you say, like, I'm trying to get pregnant, or would you just say, let's just go natural because it's no, fun? No, it feels better. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Well, it does, too. It that's does. true. Yeah. But you'd, it'd be like, and then he'd be like, I'm going to pull out, and you'd be like, no, 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 don't pull out. Um, be like, come in my pussy, like just grab his dick towards your pussy <laughs> right. area, and oh my god, that's so hot because I haven't came in a while, so right. that's getting me horny. Right, but and then yeah, fingers like, crossed, try to get knocked up, yeah, and like, like you're stuck. Mm. Gotcha, <laughs> yeah. gotcha. Instead of screaming like, uh, uh, I'm gonna be like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> then you, cheering. Then you lay back with your legs straight so it stays in. Right. Thank you. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh-huh. You make sure it doesn't leak out. No jumping yeah. up. <laughs> Catch this dude like a like in a, like in a bear trap, except instead of a bear trap on an ankle, <laughs> yeah. it's your vagina it's on a their dream catcher. <laughs> <laughs> a dream catcher. <laughs> oh my god, I want my pussy to be a dream catcher. Um, you do? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, you, but you haven't found the guy that you want to trick into getting you pregnant yet? Not yet. Not when yet. is the last time someone ejaculated inside of you? Never. Oh, you've never had it? No. Always I always wonder out? how, I, yeah. Or you're probably going to get pregnant. Or a condom. Or condom. Or condom. Yeah, you'll probably get pregnant fast. You think so? Uh-huh. Is that why? Because Wait, what? You'll probably get pregnant fast because your body's oh. not used to taking cum. Oh, that's, that's true. So, hot. so your body's going to see the cum and go like, oh, stay. You're Dominican, right? Yeah, it's going to stay. Oh, my God. My wife, it took her a while to get pregnant. She was getting so mad at uh, Dominican and Puerto Rican women. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like every, every time we saw somebody in the mall, they were pregnant. She was like, God, God damn it. And they didn't mean it. It just happened. Right. It just uh-huh. happened. She was like, yeah. she at one point had a conversation with me. She was like, I know this is like not right to say, but I think that genetically, like, Hispanic women may be the superior oh, no. being. Jesse the Greek. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, wait, Jess. I thought she wanted me to be, like, the carrier. She I got excited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. But, yeah. Didn't work out that. If, if she had asked you to be the carrier, would you have asked to inseminate you the old-fashioned way? No. Well, yeah, of course. And, like, I would ask for a little anal while I was at him. Like, hey, you that's, know. That's not hygienic, though. You don't want to go anal and then impregnate. 
Anything yeah. that's going to have sand stick in my ass or pussy, I'm down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you don't want that's one after the other. <laughs> no, because then you have a little shit baby. Yeah, which is what his mother did. Oh. <laughs> Taking it, maybe. Yeah, that's insulting. That's not nice. No, I love his mom. Thank you. I met your mom. She's, she's nice. Sweet. I met my mom. She's a little. She's like a little flirtatious though. Oh, what? she is. Yeah. yeah. What are you she's talking about? She's such a flirt. She With is. you? Yeah. She likes of girls course. too. I was like, hey, mom. <laughs> I love your parents. They're yeah, they, cool. they both. They're, they're into the swinging lifestyle and threesomes. Oh my god, you think so? I know it. They are. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you know that? I can just. They have two boys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have a brother and a sister. Though. Oh, I never met your sister. Oh, that's the last person to meet. They're swingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole family. The whole family. That, that necessarily means that they're swingers. Mm -hmm. you three know. kids. Hey. Mm -hmm. that's what, three, three, right? Threesome. Swingers. <gasps> Stop. Right. You're talking about your parents like that? I don't know. I am asking you. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, it's okay that they're like that. Okay. That's fine. When was yeah. the last time you had a threesome? Oh, like... On I think you Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Yeah, it was something week. like that. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of dick sucking. But oops, I thought that was a dick. Was it a guy and a girl <laughs> or two guys or two girls, one dick? But we were only doing oral. But I was so high, I couldn't stop laughing. Wait, one guy and three women? How did they pull that off? No, two girls, one guy. Okay. And it was just a guy, just you guys taking turns blowing him. Yeah, that sounds but great. I couldn't stop laughing because I haven't had uh, like a dick in my mouth in a while before that. I see. How so, long had it been? Two weeks. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh, so, that's a while. All yeah, right. that is a little while. Yeah, and then I forgot how to suck a dick, and then I was watching her suck it, and her face looked like a fucking clown. Like, it was <laughs> so funny. I was, like, dying. So did you suck it with her? Or, of course. And then at first, <laughs> I was like, is she clean? Is she not clean? She's my friend, but, like, I never did a blowjob with her before, but right. it was exciting. That's fine. So you, it's good to know that there are still friends that, like, you haven't done everything with. Sure. Yeah, I went to give her a ride home, and then my booty call was texting me, and he's like, oh, let's hook up. And I'm like damn okay and then i was like do you want to come with me and just watch and she's like oh can i join i'm like let's go so we went back on the fdr and we got to his place and smoked a little weed drank uh -huh. a little wine then all the dick happening you know where did he ejaculate i don't know if he came i had to go home i had to go open the hair salon <laughs> wait you in the just morning. left open the hair salon with your friend or did your friend stay? no this happened like around 5 a.m after work I was but then how did you how did you get some sleep before the hair salon I only got to sleep for an hour, so I opened at ten thirty, and I was like, "Wow, I I suck a lot of dick last night." Yeah, and, you know, was I that, took a shower before. I oh. think you tweeted about it. Oh, did I? Yeah, Probably. I think it was happening. Because sometimes, like, I read your tweets in the morning, and you're like, uh, did you, "I mean, you had anal recently, right?" No, I gave a guy anal. You put a strap on on? <laughs> no, I put two bottles, like, in bottle champagne and wine. Yeah. <gasps> You yeah. Put, you put a glass bottles up his ass? Yeah, like, I didn't even know he was going to be able to take it, and the guy fucking took it. He even spread his asshole apart. I was shocked an asshole could actually take it. Which end did you put in? The, the skinny end or the fat end? The skinny. We was there a ship in it? Oh, my God. He <laughs> ended up shitting. And I said, he you did. fucking dirty shit. Go fucking clean yourself. Hold and on, where did he shit? Inside the bottle. But I wasn't touching him, so I was like, fine, I'm going to keep shoving this shit in. <laughs> Wait, you were shoving the bottle in his like asshole, and he was shitting into it? <laughs> Was there shit in the bottle? <laughs> oh, it's a police song. <laughs> there was shit in the There's bottle. Shit in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, Mary Jean, you have a bottle in his hiney and a little duty gets in there? Yeah. And, I um, can't even talk about this. Look at me, I'm fidgeting. Wait, yeah, what, so what happened? Did, did it stink the room up? No, it didn't because it happened so soon that I was like telling him, go clean yourself, you know, and then it just didn't smell. I, I you told him, go clean yourself. Did you pull the bottle out or did he grab the I, bottle? I pulled, okay. Or did you just was, break off the end? Oh, imagine. <laughs> I was just fucking him with a bottle and I saw something like kind of jump so I put it upside down and shit came out oh no so I was like oh fuck and wait, was he embarrassed a little no, nugget he came went, out from he the was bottle like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, that's why <laughs> it was so gross that's so he said go clean out where did he go he went to the bathroom he went to his bathroom did he take a dump I don't know did he shower I don't know. I heard the water, the sink going. Only the sink? Only the sink. He's probably propped up there with his ass cheeks hanging in the sink in trying to wash sink? his crack. No, his house. So, uh, you, you've. Next you've, to his cat litter. Had you ever <laughs> fucked him before? Had you ever hooked up with him before? No, we've been texting for a while, like four months, I guess. And. A a bottle in the asshole the first time? That's pretty, uh, pretty yeah. brave. But you done a lot of texting. Um, we text here and there. I send him butt pictures and shit. That's and, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I could never make that leap for a, to a bottle in the asshole. No? No, I couldn't take it. Whose idea was the bottle? Well, I started out like after work. I'm like, oh, let's go have a drink. Everything was closed. And save course. the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> let's have a drink, but don't throw that out when you finish. So then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where's your recycling? Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so bad. Oh, my God. So he goes, oh, I have drinks in my place. You want to come back? I'm like, why not? Yeah. You know, I'm like if he kills me, he kills me. Sure. The night is young. Yeah, the night, the night is, is young. young. If I die, then I'll be dead. 
uh, yeah. And then he lives on 171st, and his building was like a it's little a like a little cracked out. I'm like, oh my god, is he a junkie? And I'm like, no. So then I slap his ass, and he liked it. And I put my like hand what? around his asshole and like try to grip, like put my like I can't just. I'm not gonna you know allow I mean? you to demonstrate like on my I kind of put my, my fingers around his butt area. He went like that. Was his pants like on? Picked, yeah, with his pants on. So you were just kind of circling the rim. Yeah, and he loved it. Right. Everyone likes their asshole play with a little bit. Mm. A little, maybe. Yeah. Not a, a bottle, bottle too. Not a bottle, no. A finger or two, yeah, sure. Straightens you right out. So, Put you on the straight and narrow. <laughs> Troy, no? Yeah. And a oh. tongue too. Oh yeah. You like a tongue, Troy? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think we might are... do this now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> after all this time, like, yeah, I didn't wow. know you like thumbs in the ass. Like, now there's a reason. I love ass fucking. It's just like my favorite thing to do. Do you think if you're spending the evening with Troy, right? He's already telling you he likes a finger, maybe two fingers, likes a tongue. Do you think you could get him to a place where you're putting maybe more in his ass than he originally intended? No, he looks too cute. He did so cute because like Adrian you put like I think it was eight seven, fingers. No, she said seven. Seven. Seven, seven. seven fingers up there. Yeah. A fist and then two extra. <laughs> yeah, two extra. Which is a lot. He yeah. loved it. He did, right? I miss this asshole. I miss you asshole. Because like, you could fit so much up there. I was surprised. Do your hands ever get dirty doing that? I Yeah, I learned my lesson in the past. I got oh, my oh, hands no. shitted on ones. So now I always wear a condom. Wait, 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 wait. So wait, wait, who shit on your hand? Like, how did that happen? Um, some guy I was hooking up with. Um, we started out with oral sex. Of course, that's where it all begins. It's <laughs> right? where all good things start. And my hands end up in his asshole, and it was like the first time I ever did it, so I wasn't um, aware people can shit on you. Sure. And I learned my lesson. And how much shit did he get on your hand? Like enough where I had to squeeze like a lemon in my hand to get the smell oh, off. It was really, God. really fucking. Gross. Was he embarrassed? No, he loved it. They love that shit. It's just like when you piss on somebody. A lot of people like, like, okay, people say squirting is pee or whatever, or you actually do pee golden showers. Right. So he shit on your hand, and you you went like, oh, and went and, and, mm. and not for you. Yeah, mm. not for you. Ugh. And it stunk for, like the next day. Ugh. You wait the next day. I bet you couldn't oh. stop smelling it either, right? Like <laughs> when, when your hand stinks, you can't oh, not God. smell it. <laughs> Your hands it's like, it's like, oh my god, they ever not stunk like shit. My hands always smell like shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> it's the stink finger in mall rats. Oh. <laughs> Can't get that shit smell off. No, but we've all had dirty hands for whatever, and then you just keep smelling not them. That your, your hands retain a scent for some reason. It's terrible. <laughs> not that. Oh my dirty. god, that's so weird. Yeah, I don't know why. Now, uh, uh, th but shit, it doesn't smell like that. You can have an orgasm out of an asshole, right? Yeah. It doesn't smell like shit, though. Oh no. What does it smell like? <laughs> Do you want me to say it? Sure. Yeah. Do you remember what it smells like? I don't remember. I need for you to remind me. I don't know. Me. It smells like a baby donkey. Like a what? <laughs> a baby donkey. Oh. <laughs> a baby donkey if you orgasm at your asshole? Yeah. Like it smells like a farmer. What you think about baby donkeys again? All this shit talking is making me feel like some sort of way. Right. I get you. I get you. So wait, it's now when, when a girl comes out of her asshole, it smells like a baby donkey? Yeah. Like a baby donkey. Um, so kind of like, like an, 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 it's an animal st stink, like a farm stink. Yeah. yeah. Like a dirty one. Yeah. A dirty baby donkey. Mm -hmm. Like a little butt that. juice, you know, they call it butt butter. Is, is that, that what they, they call it? They've called it. I've heard that in the adult industry. When hmm. you, if, if, if they're butt fucking and a little bit of, and it's not like a full on ship, hmm. but it's like a little like it's like somebody spitting as they have chewing tobacco in their mouth. If you pull that dip. out and it's on your dick, yeah. You know anything about butt butter? Yeah, <laughs> it looks like butter too. It, it does. does. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, like like a nice spread. Um. Yeah. Oh, I think it's now. Yeah, it's now yeah. known as, as truffle butter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what that's, they always sing about. That's what that song's about. Oh. Well, what's the song? I truffle thought they butter. were talking about cooking oil. No, no, no. They're talking about. Uh, the, 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 the asshole juice. Yeah, asshole juice. No yeah. way. Yeah, who wouldn't know? Nicki Minaj, Drake, Lil Wayne, all talking about butt butter. Oh. They're, they like anal, too. Hey, everybody likes anal. I heard uh, I heard that you removed your clit piercing. Oh, rest in peace to my little clit piercing. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Um, I think I, it's right to remove it. I don't think you need it. It's sad, though, to say enough. goodbye. Oh. And it kept slipping, uh, slipping out of the little hole. Mm -hmm. And every time I was, like, having oral sex, it was, like, coming out. And I was, like... Afraid every time I thought it would rip my clit. Sure. Apart. Yeah, you better off take. You don't need any jewelry on your clit. Yeah, no. I was it's supposed more... to make it better, right? Not worse. It's not supposed oh, to give you something such to worry line. about. Yeah, no. It well, doesn't. How long did you have it for? Like four months. Did it it's wreck your sensitivity down there or no? Yeah, like I didn't have sex for a month. So wow. When I actually started coming again, I just didn't know what it felt like. It felt like a virgin. Seriously, it was so depressing. But when when it happened for the first time and you felt like a virgin again, that had to feel amazing. It did, but I was afraid. What were you afraid of? Just the feeling. It was a different feeling. Because like you a, hadn't felt that in so long. Yeah, and the whole piercing in it felt really weird. I understand. Did it hurt when he did it? 
Of course. I felt like I was giving birth. I was asking for an epidural. Well, probably people who have given birth would probably say that uh, giving birth probably hurts it worse. They would say yeah. that. But, they clip your they yeah, never they have, have, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's they don't true. know. You know, sometimes when women give birth, the, uh, the taint rips. That's what I heard. Have you ever heard and of an episiotomy? Yeah, like you're like it because like they have to sew it up because it, it just becomes one, just one big hole, one giant hole that you're collapsing out of. That's it. It's like That's a why fucking a lot of neutron get star. Divorced. Because because yeah. yeah, because the pussy never feels the same, and they have to go out and cheat. They stuff can tie like it. To feel, they but can it's tie not it. the same. Right. Yeah, I don't know how I have they tie it. A lot of pregnant it. friends. Snooki said she was re-virginized after she gave birth. She said she had three stitches in her vagina, and it made her tighter. But I don't know if I'd mm. want stitches in a girl's pussy though. Well, they don't say. Hmm? No. You know, and eventually it just heals. Like, it's not like there's like a Frankenstein scar on them. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to have like a C-section of anything. Yeah. But C-section puts you out. It does, but my pussy and my asshole would stay the same. They and would. it's tight. And it's probably just a little bikini line cut. After a C-section, yeah. you can't fuck for like eight weeks. Did you know that? I'm sucking dick then. <laughs> That's yeah. good for you. Where there's a will, there's a way. That's yeah. what people don't realize. I'm Plus, after, mentally. You, after giving birth, you probably don't want to fuck immediately. No. How long did you want, like, you know, after you just had a baby, how long before you were like, all right, let's get moving here, I want to, I want to do it? How long did it take for you to really start wanting sex? Um, I was probably able to get by jerking off for like... That's so hot. Say that Four again. or five weeks. Say it again. Jerking off. Ooh. Yeah, I was doing that. <laughs> My nipples just got really hard. They did? Yeah, <laughs> but you yeah. wouldn't like what he was watching. That wasn't like porn or anything. It was old wrestling footage. That's not what I watched. <laughs> no. That's different Different times of the day for that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was pleasuring myself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But after like... Did he come each time? Did I? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. A lot? Well, just a regular amount. Was it like all over your hand? I get, yeah. Have you ever tasted your own cum? No. But others he has. <laughs> that's, that's not accurate. No, I have not uh, I have not tasted my own cum. It must Troy be so I, good. Troy, you think so? <laughs> I know. What do you think so. it tastes like? Sweet. Really? Like gummy bears. Do you think that's No, he has I, an unhealthy diet. I doubt it's, it's, it's but sweet. But I have a lot of sugar in my diet. That's true, but that doesn't mean it's going to taste sweet. You don't think so? No. What do you think it tastes like? <laughs> I don't know. Not good, though. Well, how do you, I didn't know you were an expert on like. I'm just to, guessing. Oh, I see. Speculating. It's mere speculation. Yeah. yeah. Troy always, uh, who's that naked person? Is that you? She's a hater. She's a fucking <laughs> cunt. She's a dirtbag. Look at her fucking place. Her poor dog. <laughs> Who is little, it? Okay. what's his name? I, I forgot his name. Something about money. Benjamin, she, AKA Benji. Um, he's asking for help. He's calling for PETA. Oh, How come you don't bitch. like her? There's a photo of a, there's a nude photo of a woman. It's she a, must be so happy. It's a mirror right now selfie. That she's in a fucking show and they're even, well, they no should take knows. that picture off and leave the little caption. I mean, well, it's, no on your Twitter. Twitter. it's on your Twitter. Yeah, I know, oh, oh. but she's a little dirty bitch. The caption is, so this is, uh, this is Mary Jean's Twitter and she posted a nude selfie of a woman. It's a year ago. And it's from a year ago and it says, so there's this bitch Ingrid who, what a bitch. Who fucking, Don't even say her name. Oh, there's she this doesn't deserve that. bitch blank. Who fucking fresh. Who's fucking fresh. Who's fucking fresh. About to go fuck her up at her job. Fucking hoe. Yeah, we went to Flash Dance. Um, Flash Dance is a strip club in the city. Mm -hmm. So we heard she was working there. Me and my friend went to beat her up, but she took the night off because she was sucking dick somewhere else. Why'd you want oh. to beat her up? What'd she do wrong? She fucking insulted my best friend's motherhood, Stacy. What? Like, how dare you? She should... She, she, she's dirt. We're not even going to mention her. Good. We're done with her, too. She's, in the, she's on the list of that. And what about that picture? Um, What's that? Such a long time. I keep dropping my lip gloss. That was for the the penthouse spread I did. That's oh, you. That's my Jean. asshole. Before it ever got fucked. <laughs> before, back in the day. Back in the day when it was a virgin. Yeah. yeah now that. I love fucking in my ass. You, you do? do? I fucking love it. I come so good. I remember it was only like a couple years ago when you had anal for the first time. You had it on a movie set, right? Yeah, with Jules Jordan. Right, and now he has the, a big dick. Jules, wait, Jules, oh, yeah. I'm thinking, wait, Jules Jordan, the director. Yeah. Oh, we I, shot together and we did anal. I didn't know he did. He shot. I, yeah, mean, I know he does video. POV. Oh, POV. Yeah. And now, like, that's your thing now, ain't Like, it? I fucking love it. He introduced me how to do it the nice, right way. Right. And now you shove bottles up dudes' asses. <laughs> yeah. This is great. It's amazing the uh, the evolution that you've that you've gone through. Wow, yeah. He's still, he's still making movies. Yeah. That's been a long oh, time. so hot, Jules. I want you to fuck my ass again. Oh, you like Jules? I love him. Look at those eyes. Virgin eyes. And he's, he's in LA? A virgin. He's yeah. not? Yes. He's, he's not, not a, virgin. a virgin. Oh. He knows what he's doing. He does. His dick is so good and it tastes good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But you you tasted it before anal, not after. Um, I don't know. It happened so fast. <laughs> wow, so you might have gotten ass to mouth on the first time. Most likely, but good I love you. it. Good he's for a, you. he's a good egg, Jules. I went with him one time to a a, a thing where they're they're scouting for new girls. Okay. And it was uh, you walk into a hotel and there's like eight naked girls there and he's just talking to them and taking pictures and like he was thinking of using one of them. I guess it's a common like casting call. No one did anything, mm -hmm. but we, I just think I'd take pictures of all. I these. bet you he mind fucked them like he's. It was he so mind fucked. Yeah, he's very smart. Like that. he just dragged me along. I was so happy. Oh, so lucky. 
<laughs> Were you horny afterwards? Because so much pussy around and all I that was, good stuff. But it, it all it had nothing to do with my world. Like I was just along for the ride with his. He was the guy that they. I was just. I think it was 2007. I was like hosting Avian again. So they, they would just try to whatever you're. They would just try to. Uh, they would try to impress him. I was just his friend who was there. They're the definitely guy. impressing you too. You have a dick, Jim. I, oh, I was very happy. But I mean, they didn't care about impressing me. You know what? Uh, uh, Jim's were- Jim's old nickname was what? What was it? When you were working in like uh, Target or, or Pergamon or wherever it was you were working? Toast. Right. Toast. Any yeah. toast? No. His nickname was Toast because he used to smoke weed. When I was younger. And uh, I'd come back toasted and that was just what they called me. What was it that a young lady said you were doing? Oh, toast God. was, damn, Toast. Oh, a black girl was rubbing my dick and she went, <laughs> damn, Toast, you Holden. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> toast is Holden. <laughs> I know that. You should put that on a shirt. It, it is a great expression. Toast yeah. is Holden. Plus, it's got to feel great when she says that. It did. I'll never forget her. Yeah. Aww. I haven't seen her in 30 years, but I'll never forget her. Did she have a big ass? She did, yeah. Yeah. Mm. She was sexy. You know, uh, you know, it was supposed to be here today. Uh, where is Cool Keith? Cool Keith, who like was obsessed with you. I love him. He's trying to. Did you ever do his photo shoots? Uh, we did a music video together called Tired. You did? Yeah. That's great. It he was fun. It? He he still hasn't checked in. He's forty minutes late. <laughs> He's forty minutes late right <laughs> He's now. He's worse than I am. Yeah. I was early. Y- well, uh. yeah, but we. 